Good morning and welcome to our uh, weekly office hours webcast. Um, if you have questions, please type your questions uh, on the right hand side of your browser there. Uh, and uh, once I see a, a number of questions are there, I'll, I'll, I'll start the, uh, the webcast. Uh, and so for those of you just joining us, um, welcome. And I hope you join us every single week. And you can ask me any type of question you want, uh, including business questions, career questions, personal development questions, any questions really. And so uh, what we usually do is um, we keep going with the call. It doesn't end until all questions uh, have been exhausted, meaning nobody else has uh, has questions. And so um, if you have questions, please type them now. Willem, I, I see you're, you're here this morning. Good morning to you too. Uh, MacBell, good morning as well. Uh, great to have you. Welcome. Uh, again, if you have questions, uh, please type them now. Uh, and I've got... Uh, I've got a couple of backup laptops today because last time, remember, I it's like I have a drinking problem or a coffee drinking problem. I spilled my coffee on my my uh, my keyboard there. So uh, again, if you have questions, please type them now. And once there's no more questions left in the queue, then we'll we'll wrap it up. Um, so I'm working on my uh, complete um, uh, business plan course. It, it should be done really soon. I'm really excited about it. Um, because there's um, there's going to be about 50 free templates for you to create your own business plan from scratch. Uh, and uh, um, I'm creating it also uh, in Microsoft Excel. So whatever data you type in will automatically be put into Microsoft Word into the business plan document. And th the reason I wanted to create that course was because I, I wanted to help you decide if you should quit your job uh, and start a company or not. And since most businesses uh, go belly up within the first couple of years of being founded, I wanted to provide you with a, a process so that you would have more confidence that you should quit your job and start a company or not. And I, I think that if, if you write, you know, five or 10 business plans uh, in your life, uh, the first couple should be about topics or business models that you write a lot about and you realize it's not a good business model. And so the thing about business is you only have to be right in business one time. And so keep trying, keep trying until you hit it big and you will hit it big if you're resilient enough. And if you're okay with failure, not everybody is, but um, you got to be okay with failure. Um, now, oh, looks like we have a question here um, or it's a comment from Geronimo. Hey, Geronimo, how are you? Uh, I've seen your course, a story course about finding your passion and purpose in life. And I found it amazing. Well, thank you very much for that, John. So that's a free course of mine. And by the way, if you have questions, please type them right now. Thank you. Um, so John is re referring to uh, one of my free courses and I have a lot of free courses. Uh, and um, it, it's called a, a story course about finding your passion and purpose in life. It will help you with goal setting as well. And so just go to my Udemy profile, uh, and um, you'll be able to find it. Uh, it's the second most recent course uh, that, that I published. And I actually took, um, I learned how to write that book by taking another Udemy course. Um, I took a course by a, a famous author on Udemy uh, named Jessica Brody. And uh, she taught me in that course how to write a fiction book. And I wrote the book for my kids. Um, it's a short book. Uh, it's on Amazon. I think it's free on Amazon as well. Um, and it's, it, it's called, um, uh, am I alive? And what the heck happened to me? It's about a dream and it helps, um, you know, people, my kids or whatnot to, to live their life on their terms and be confident and do what they're most happy about in life. Because the worst thing that can possibly happen is if you live someone else's life, you know, like maybe your parents want you to be a lawyer or an engineer, um, you know, but you're not passionate about it. You, you can't, you can't live your life on someone else's terms. And that, that's a recipe for disaster and depression as well. You got to do what, what you're most passionate about in life. You know, what was the reason you were put on this earth? You know, what's your, what's your raison d'etre? Uh, what's your purpose? And once you find your purpose in life from a professional perspective, it won't feel like you have a job. It'll feel like you have a passion. And, and that's a beautiful thing um, because I can't tell you how great it feels to wake up every day and do what I love doing. But I wasn't always like this. I had a lot of you know pretty miserable jobs. And if you have questions, please type them here and I'll answer them in, in the order I receive them. And, you know, but I, I worked on Wall Street 
And I, I worked there because I wanted to make money. And, and that's, a, that's a disgusting thing. And I, I wasn't happy. And uh, it was at a firm called Goldman Sachs. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of it. Uh, great firm, good people. And what happened was every year uh, around Christmas bonus season, everybody would get depressed. Um, th everyone was given enough money to survive, of course, but people in the cancer of Western society and Wall Street as we compare ourselves to those that make more. And so every Wall Street bonus season, people would compare themselves to those that make more. And, and it got worse for me. Um, you know, I, I actually left, uh, I went to a hedge fund called Citadel. Uh, Citadel recruited me out here on, on the West Coast. And I was even more miserable because I left Goldman to make more money. Disaster, disaster, okay? And th the Dalai Lama had this great quote, and I love it. Uh, I'm going to butcher it here, I'm sorry. But he said, the problem with Western society is that we chase money our entire lives and we sacrifice our health. And at the end of our lives, we sacrifice all of our money to maintain our health. And we look back and we realize we never really lived to begin with. And so you, you got to do what you're, what you're passionate about in life, what you love doing the most. Uh, otherwise, what happens is if you chase money, you'll lose your dreams and your money. But if you chase your dreams, uh, eventually they'll come true if you're okay with failing a couple of times. And then the money comes accidentally. It always does. Okay. Okay, great. So looks like we've got a, a, a couple other uh, comments and questions here. Um, next question is, um, oh, Geronimo, I know my, my, that, that book of mine started slow. I apologize for that. You're right. Um, but, but the reason I, I got creative with it was, was this. So for those of you just joining us, I, I wrote a book called, um, and a course called How to Find Your Purpose Passion uh, in Life. It's on Udemy. It's free, like many of my courses. And I wrote it for my kids uh, for, for them to find happiness in their job and meaning later in life. Uh, and, and there's a question here, how did I get creative and create that? Well, what I do is this, um, I have a rule that I'm not allowed to work on Sundays and it's not a religious thing, although our forefathers and foremothers thousands of years ago knew in the 10 commandments or those 10 basic rules, whatever, uh, that you can't work every day of the week or you burn out. And so on day seven, Sunday for me, um, it's a family day and I'm not allowed to work. And so what I would do is this, I, I cheated a bit. I, I would go to the gym, do the elliptical training, and I'd start writing my book on the elliptical trainer. And I told myself, this isn't work, this is fun. So anyway, that's that's where I, that's how I came up with the idea for that, um, for that book. But thank you very much. Uh, again, if you're just joining us, please type your questions here. Oh, wow, a ton of them just hit here. Okay, great. All right, so I've got a question saying, what are my, my 15 goals? And can I share them uh, with, with you? Sure. Um, so every year or two since, since my 20s, early 20s, I would write down my goals. And I started off taking a Tony Robbins course on tape. I took it on CD. And then eventually I got to meet Tony Robbins a couple of years ago. Um, not, not at an event, but, but somewhere else. Great guy. And he influenced me big time. He's amazing to write down my goals. And so every two years, I would sit down and write down my goals after I would listen to his tape program or, or DVD program or CD program. And, and I'm humbled to say that I've, I've achieved most of them in life. Uh, there's a couple that I haven't, uh, which is uh, get a black belt in karate. I got into a car accident. I'm totally fine. <laughs> but I kind of messed up my, my back a bit, so I can't, I can't do it anymore. But um, I'm a very dangerous yellow belt, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Uh, another goal of mine um, was to um, you know live um, where, where I live now, this this tech area, whatever. For me, this is like Hollywood. I love technology. I'm a nerd. Um, and other goals were to, I don't know, to try to live forever and not ever, but help people make their lives more fruitful and better. And for me, I get depressed if I don't do something every day that helps somebody. Um, anyway, it's it's kind of fun. And if if you have if your job uh, you currently have is helping other people. Uh, that's a beautiful thing. That must feel real good. I'm sure it feels good for doctors as well. Uh, if you want to be a doctor. All right, great. So thank you for that, for that question, uh, Geronimo. Okay. So next question I've got is from John. Um, are there any restrictions or advantages or advice you have on getting funded, funded for a, a corporation as a, as a, as opposed to traditional uh, funding. You wrote B Corp. I don't know what that means, sorry. But if you want, you can you can type uh, B Corp there, what it means. Uh, but in terms of, of how to raise money, and by the way, I don't, I don't think anybody 
should, um, should use their own money to start a company unless you have a lot, okay? Um, use a little bit just to get going uh, and then get a high net worth investor uh, or a, a venture capital firm to, to invest in. I'll tell you how. So what you can do, and I actually just gave a, a presentation two days ago to a wonderful uh, business school from France. They're in town called HSA. And I recorded that MBA lecture and I'll upload it for you guys uh, in, in a couple of days and I'll teach you how to raise money. Okay. I have a course called fundraising. Don't buy it. <laughs> just watch this lecture that I'm going to, I'm going to upload because it's just as good. But uh, when, when you, when you raise money, the most important thing is your delivery and how your rapport is, meaning how do you get along with the people that you're meeting with? Then comes the ideas. Okay. Because people always want to, um, they want, <clears throat> Pardon me. They want to invest in people uh, that they have confidence in and people they like as well. And, and I'm not telling you to be disingenuous when you raise money, uh, but, but I'm telling you just to be yourself, man. I mean, go to my, uh, if you want, you can go to my website, haroonventures.com and download my free 200 page networking book. It's free. And that will teach you everything you need to know about getting meetings with literally anybody on the planet. And I mean anybody. Okay. And uh, the trick is to find something you have in common with, with other people uh, and then meet with them. And when you're in your, your meeting, and this is also for an interview, for those of you who are about to interview, the first five, 10 or 15 minutes or so of that meeting and all meetings uh, should be just chit chat about them, you, the weather, what, what's new, that sort of thing. Uh, because if you bond with people on a personal level, uh, they'll be more willing to help you. People want to help you if, if you ask the right way. So what do you talk about then? If you go to an, uh, an interview or you meet a potential customer um, and, and you, or a potential fund rate, a person that's going to give you money, what do you talk about? Well, you talk about what you have in common. And I, I published a vlog a couple of days ago, watch it if you want, uh, on why sports is the most important business topic. And, and, and I'll tell you why, because it's really hard for, uh, and I've, this is coincidence here, by the way. <laughs> this is our, our team is of Toronto, the Toronto Maple Leafs. We haven't won the Stanley Cup since the '60s. It's tragic, but but the one thing that everybody has in common uh, is a love for some sport. I don't care what country, city, province, state, or you're from. One sport you probably love, and talking about sports really it really transcends generations, right? So if I meet somebody from New York and I find out they're a Yankees fan in my meeting with them. Um, if they're younger, I'll talk about my admiration for Derek Jeter. And by the way, Derek Jeter was very successful because his kids from the age of nine made him write down his goals every January and put them on his wall. Okay. But no, if, if it's older, uh, I'll talk about um, Mickey Mantle. Did they ever see Mickey Mantle or, or Joe DiMaggio play? And I was, I was in Brazil recently and I met a couple of older people. Um, and, and of course, the first question I asked was, did you ever get to see Pele play? It was a the best football player ever, right? Soccer. <laughs> uh, and, and that's a great icebreaker. And so talk about sports. And once you find out where they're from in the meeting, um, it's pretty easy to talk about sports. Um, in, in the United States where I live, if I meet somebody from Baltimore, I'll talk about the Baltimore Orioles and this great player called Cal Ripken, that sort of thing. So sports is is a great way to, to break the ice, so to speak, uh, in every type of, of, of business meeting. Now, for the rest of how to raise money. Um, just wait a couple of days because I'm going to upload that, that presentation to you on, on how to do it. Uh, the bottom line there is just less is more. Keep it simple. Three bullet points per slide and network, network, network. And, and I'll show you exactly how in, in that, uh, that lecture I upload. Now, when it comes to networking, um, if you're meeting with um, a, a potential customer it's big coffee. Last week I spilled it on my laptop. I went this week. If you're meeting with a potential big customer and, and the person you're meeting with is not the decision maker, meaning the person that's going to decide whether to hire you or buy your product, then you're wasting your time. And always go right to the decision maker. And I'm going to teach you right now how to get a meeting with any CEO on the planet. And I publish a vlog on this as well. Okay. So I don't know if you guys have seen the movie, uh, The Wedding Crashers. Um, it was hard for Owen, Owen uh, Wilson uh, to get into, you know, weddings, crash them. 
Uh, you had to be on a list. And sometimes you have to go to assigned seating on tables. When you go to an annual shareholder meeting, there's no list. Anybody can walk in. And so here's what you do. And this is what I used to do. And it worked out like a charm. I would go to annual shareholder meetings of uh, where there was a CEO I wanted to meet. And what happens in the annual shareholder meeting is you sit down for an hour or two, whatever. They talk about really boring stuff about business, kind of like my courses. <laughs> uh, and then you get bad coffee. Uh, and then at the end, they'll take questions and then everyone leaves. Now, nobody leaves an annual shareholder meeting. I should say no CEO ever leaves an annual shareholder meeting until everyone's gone. Okay, it's just protocol. And if you go up to them and talk to them, the CEO, at the end of that meeting, they will give you 100% laser focused attention. And the reason they'll give you attention is because the board members are around and other employees, and they have to set a good example for others in their company. And so talk to them, talk to them, you know, uh, find out um, if they can help you. Um, and if you have a product you wanna sell, after you pitch to them briefly, meaning the 30 second pitch, exchange business cards and go to a website called moo.com to get business cards, that's M-O-O.com. They're thick, they're high quality, they're great. And after you exchange business cards with her or him, I want you to ask them if you can set up a follow-up meeting. And they'll say yes, right on the spot, because they want to set a good example for um, everybody in their company. Okay. And if they can't help you, then say, well, can you please, um, can you please introduce me to somebody in human resources? Because I'm, I'm really passionate about your company and the industry that, that, that your company is in. They're going to say yes, because the board members are around them and, you know, um, all, all their other C-level executives. So that's the best way to, to reach a, a potential customer that's a CEO. And you can meet anybody you want. You know, I've, I've, I've met with Bill Gates before. Um, I can go there if you want to hear that story. Okay, great. So again, if you have questions, please type them now. Uh, the, the next question I've got is uh, from, uh, from Lay Dante. Hey, Dante, how are you, man? Thanks for that comment this week uh, on LinkedIn. Appreciate it. Um, uh, that was the one on, on so seeds me long-term focus, right? So Leigh is saying, or Dante, good morning, Chris, have you started a consulting business before? Uh, yes, I have. I'll tell you about it in a second. Okay. Uh, and everybody on this call should do it. And I'll tell you why. Okay. All right. And the follow-up you have is what skill sets or previous experience do I need to start a consulting business and who are my customers? That's a great question. Okay, great. So I think everybody should be self-employed at one point in your life. Okay. Um, and one of the great ways to start a, a company is just as a consultant and you, you just keep all your receipts because you get to write everything off to a lot of stuff, whatever. Um, but, uh, what I did was the consulting firm I started and I was working at, uh, Accenture at the time, which is a tech consulting firm, but I started, um, a, a, a consulting company for charities. It was, it was free consulting. And I took a sabbatical from, from uh, Accenture for six weeks in the summer of 97, I think. Yeah, I'm old. <laughs> and it was called CICC.com, right? And that's Canadian Internet Charity Consulting. You can go to the Web Archives website and do a search on CICC.com to see who, who used to own it, me, and who owns it now, the biggest Chinese bank. I'm so dumb for letting that address go. <laughs> uh, but but I found that um, it, was, it was free consulting I was doing. Um, and, and I was trying to empower the empowerers. And the way I did it back then was a little bit different. The way I met customers was I just went door to door uh, and, and I showed up and, and I called as well. And it was very hard, but I got customers eventually. Um, the way I recommend that that Dante, that, that you and everybody else in this call do it is just download my networking book uh, and network because people with something in common with you want to help you. Uh, and my success rate since LinkedIn first came out, uh, my success rate on getting meetings with people that I want to meet with that I don't know is 95%. And I don't say that to impress you. Rather, I say it to impress upon you the fact that anybody can do it. Read my networking book. It'll explain how. Uh, it's a free download from haroonventures.com. Uh, the bottom line is get meetings with people using LinkedIn uh, that have something in common with you uh, and then meet with them and bond and read the book. You'll see if you have follow-up questions, let me know here. So thank you. Um, and so in terms of who your customers are, uh, Dante, that, that should have answered your question as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, Tiger Glor Glory is here. That's Cassandra. I'm starting to remember your, your names, not just your your icons and, and, and pretend names here. Um, uh, uh, Cassandra says, hi, Chris. Sorry I missed last week. Uh, my job kept me away. Oh, my God, please. It's, it's great to have you again. Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, all right. So, um, and next question is from Shalman uh, or Shamlan. I'm so sorry. Um, I'll show you how small the uh, the font is here. I'm trying to read. <laughs> okay. Um, can I have your advice? Of course. Um, I, I have the opportunity to continue my education, government funded. Oh, cool. However, I don't know if three years studying uh, IT information technology will be worth it while there are a lot of materials uh, online. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. So um, I'm, I'm going to answer the, the question for you on on whether or not um, you or anybody in this call should go to go to university to get a degree or your second degree or third or whatever it is. Okay, only go to university. Only get a degree if you have tried very hard to get a job in a certain industry by networking and it doesn't work. So exhaust all networking opportunities first. And if you've tried, like, I, for example, I did my MBA because I want to switch into the finance industry. I didn't know how to network though when I was 26. Uh, and so um, I, I remember I, I sent my resume to Morgan Stanley, a lot of places. Uh, people either didn't return my call or if I got them live, um, they would say that um, you're not the right fit. And so I, I went to business school so I could transition from consulting to Wall Street. Um, again, don't do this. Don't get a, a, a later stage degree uh, unless you've tried your best to network and get that job in that industry and you can't. Okay. So um, what I would say for you, uh, Shamlin, is um, uh, only do it if you think it's going to help you to get closer to your passion, meaning maybe a job in tech, you said IT in, in this example. Um, if you can get a job without it, then I don't think you need it. And, and I know that's a very controversial thing to say, coming from somebody that has two degrees, whatever. Um, but it, it, things were different back then. You know, I, I'm older, whatever. Um, you had to do it to get a job uh, in, in certain industries. And the beautiful thing is that, and this is, uh, this is part of my speech I gave in Brazil recently, but the biggest companies in the world now, uh, in the United States, do not require you to have a degree anymore. Okay, Apple does not require a degree. Google doesn't. Um, uh, Bank of America doesn't. IBM, which is the oldest company ever, doesn't either. Um, so uh, don't feel like you have to go to, to go to university um, uh, to get uh, into a job or an industry you're passionate about. Now, of course, if if you want to be a, a doctor, um, you, you have to go to uh, uh, you have to go to university, right? And that that reminds me of a great charity I'm on the board of that I love called Doctors Without Diplomas. All right, next question. That was a total joke, by the way, that, that, that charity doesn't exist. <laughs> but if you want to be a doctor because you want to be a doctor, because you love it, then you have to go to med school, obviously. So, so the bottom line is get a graduate degree only, or an undergraduate degree even, only if you've tried to get into the industry you want to get into uh, and it doesn't work. Now, if you're younger and you're just finishing high school and you don't know what you want to be when you're older, you have no idea, uh, then yeah, maybe uh, do a degree, go to university because that will kind of help you find yourself, that sort of thing. Uh, and for those of you that uh, graduated years ago uh, and you want to switch careers, like last week, there was a, a gentleman on the call who was 46 and said his dream is to work uh, in investment banking at a firm like Goldman. Um, he says it's too old for me to apply. And I'm like, dude, no way, man. You're never too young to start over. The average age of somebody starting a company in the United States is over 50 now. Uh, the average lifespan of people since 1950 has increased by 26 years. And so, as I've said many times in the past month or two on these calls, you're all 26 years younger than you think you are. And the person that's going to live to make it to 150 is alive today. So you're never too, uh, too old to switch careers. Okay. And if your dream has always been to go to, I don't know, Harvard Law School, uh, then fucking make it happen. Okay, I'm sorry for swearing. I just, I, I watched a video this morning from Gary Vaynerchuk and he said that word, and I, earmuffs. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> um, just make it happen. Make it happen. You know, if, if, you're, if your dream was always to be a rock star and you played in a garage band when you were younger and you're 70 now, I can't you be the first 70 year old rock star? Why not? Make it happen. Anybody can switch careers, leverage online education to do it. And I think that my kids, my three children might be the last generation that feel that they have to get a degree. Okay. Um, it's, it's a little ridiculous. You, you do an undergraduate degree, 13 hours of class a week for four years. You're in some place, a hundred grand in debt. 
Um, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, anyway, I, I don't think education online, like the stuff I do is not going to replace schools completely, but it will supplement and the two will merge at some point. Okay. Great. If, if you have questions, uh, please, please write them here. And Shamlin, one thing, one more thing I want to say about this three-year degree, a three-year uh, uh, potential um, uh, degree that your government is giving you. Uh, maybe it's Singapore. I don't know who you are, but I know Singapore does that, which is awesome. If you could do it at night, that'd be great. Okay. That'd be great. So, um, and it's free too. And um, my, my wife, Christine, she, um, and a lot of you that work, um, <clears throat> pardon me, if you work for a big company, I, I, I'm going to save you a lot of money. Okay. A lot of you that work for, for big companies don't realize that there's so many different amazing programs uh, and, and savings you can get if you just talk to human resources. Okay. Um, you know, like, like life insurance or a dental policy, which I had in Canada from Accenture when I worked there um, and, and education as well. Look into it. Okay. I know if there's education credits in your company uh, because you can take online courses or do degrees at night for free at many companies because your company pays for it. You just got to look, look for it. Talk to somebody in HR, human resources, or ask your boss or, or somebody else in the company that's been there for, for a while. Like my wife, for example, when we lived in, in New York City, um, she wanted to, to get an MBA and she worked for, um, uh, she worked for Calvin Klein Cosmetics in the Trump building. I, one day I'll tell you stories. Um, <laughs> uh, but um, but her, her company, Calvin Klein, paid for her to get an MBA from Fordham. Uh, at, uh, at at night, and it took her three or four years. Um, it was a lot of work, but it was paid for. So ask your company if they do that. Okay, a lot of companies will do it, and they do it because they want to help you. But there's other reasons too. They do it because it's good PR. You know, come to our firm and we'll give you this, whatever. And also, they get a tax benefit. Okay, and for those of you that work for other companies, and um, they match your annual retirement savings program plan. You better do that then. That's free money, right? And for those of you that that aren't sure if your company has that, talk to your boss or human resources to find out if they have that retirement savings program match in place. And a lot of them pay for daycare too, right? Like Cassandra, I, I know you mentioned you have a you have a daughter, and I think Tiger's the the, the nickname of your daughter you mentioned. But um, your company in Florida, they, they might have daycare as well. And I don't know if, if your daughter's really young, but if you want daycare, um, you know you could you could get that paid for. I did as well. Okay. And whenever you go to the Apple store, okay, Android lovers are hating me now, uh, or, or, you know, it, any big store, um, ask them, is there a discount because I work at XYZ company? Like my wife works at, at IBM. <laughs> she works at IBM. And whenever we go to the Apple store, we get 5% off because she says I work at, at IBM. Show your student card as well. If you're a student, you save there, that sort of thing. It all adds up, eh? Okay, great. Thanks. If you have questions, please type them now. Um, when there are no more questions, I'll wrap up the call. I've allotted three hours, but I really go forever until there's no more questions, meaning it can be more than three hours or less. So please type them now. And when I don't see any more questions, I'll, I'll stop. Thanks. All right. Um, next question I've got. Um, and, and Chef, and if you get a chance, tell me who's paying for that that degree. Uh, what what government, if you feel comfortable doing that. I'm, re I'm really curious. That's a good deal. Okay, great. Um, all right, next question. Uh, and when I look down, I'm reading questions, obviously, uh, is from Mac Bell. How are you? I think it's the first time I've, I've heard from you. Uh, welcome. Uh, hi, Chris. I want to ask you later on, but the um, uh, question is, if I'm a student with debt, is it possible to go out pitching ideas without paying back my student loans first? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't matter how much debt you have. Uh, when you go out and try to raise money, they're, they're two mutually exclusive uh, uh, events, mutually exclusive events. And for those of you that have a lot of student debt, um, if you're not sure if you'll be able to pay it off um, and the rates are high, uh, and this goes for anybody with a mortgage too, of course, um, go as soon as you can to the bank and see if you can refinance because interest rates are starting to rise now because the Federal Reserve, which is the uh, organization in the United States that raises interest rates, has started to raise rates, which is why the market's been very volatile recently. So, so yeah, you don't need to you don't have to pay back other loans to get uh, to get uh, somebody to fund your company because when somebody funds uh, your company, McBell, uh, what happens is it's not a loan; okay, it's an equity investment, meaning they are going to own part of your company. 
Okay. And so they don't care about what other outstanding loans you have. Now, some people might be really uptight and might do a credit check on you first. Um, I know that when I've, um, <laughs> when I've started companies in the past and, and I've sold part of the company as a way to raise money, uh, people have done, uh, I had to go get a, a test, see if I take drugs, you know, what kind of test that is. Uh, and they also, uh, they also did a credit check on me and all that crazy stuff. And anyway, whatever. Um, but no, if, if, if someone's going to invest in your company, I don't, I don't think it matters if you have, if you have student debt or, or any debt for, for that matter. Okay. Okay, great. Um, next one we've got is <laughs> McBell says, I'm a very dangerous yellow belt. Yeah, Y'all better watch out. Okay. Cause I, I'm a yellow belt. Eh? <laughs> yeah, for those of you just joining, I, I, I want to get my black belt, but I hurt my back years ago. I can't. Uh, but I will one day. I'm still going to get it done. Okay. All right. Question from uh, from Tiger here. You said not to use your money when you start a company. Yep. Uh, I looked at your networking book. If I live in Florida, how do I find out whom to call or meet to talk to about investing and how to pay them back? Um, okay. I understand. What you're All right. Thanks, Tiger. And and I think you'd mentioned uh, in in the past it was it was your 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 father years ago had this energy credits idea you want to start. And a lot of people uh, are very mindful of, of the dangerous changes that are occurring right now uh, with, uh, with the environment. And so what I would recommend to you, Cassandra, if this is relevant uh, to your business model, is find people online uh, that uh, are wealthy, that are on the boards of great environmental uh, charities. Um, and you can also get grants from these great environmental uh, based charitable organizations as well. They'll, they'll, they can give it to you. Uh, and Tiger, just also find out, um, you know, what, uh, what, what the background is of, of people you're going to meet with and find somebody with a similar background to you or similar interests using LinkedIn, using the book you read, which is free. Um, and, and I, let me talk about Toronto. Okay. So I'm from Toronto. Um, let's say that I was, uh, um, uh, visiting, um, Paris. And I did a search and found people from in LinkedIn. I did an advanced search around the postal code around Paris, Paris, Paris. Uh, I would search for people that are from Canada in LinkedIn, from Canada, from Toronto, fans, maybe of the Toronto Maple Leafs, I don't know. Uh, and also ones that went to McGill. And um, it's actually, actually, uh, Tiger, or Sandra, in my book, I give an example of that as well. I give an example of somebody that is visiting Paris that wants to work for McKinsey, big consulting firm, which I got rejected from. And so what they did in the book, and I provided screen prints there, was they did an advanced search in LinkedIn uh, on the Paris postal code. And they searched for the words McGill University, assuming you went to McGill undergrad, and McKinsey. And I think there was 10 or 15 uh, people that came up. And so, uh, uh, Cassandra, once you get the meeting, the first 10 minutes or so is obviously just talk about what you have in common. You know, maybe if you went to the same undergraduate school uh, and, and you mentioned you're from Florida, let me just, I'll talk about University of Miami. Um, you know, did, did you go to, um, you know, XYZ bar or restaurant? Is it still open? Or have you heard about the new administration building, that sort of thing? You, you want to bond it first. And and people will want to help you. Now, you mentioned there, paying people back with interest. No, I don't want you to get a loan. I don't want you, anybody on this call to get a loan to start a company ever. Okay. And the reason I say that is because, um, number one, I don't want to put you and your, your family and your daughter, your children, whatever it might be, uh, under pressure. I don't want to do that to you. I don't, I don't want that to happen to you. Okay. Um, I, I want you to get, um, somebody else to invest in your company and buy part of it. Okay. And I'll go there in a second. But if you, if you get a loan from a bank, uh, the banks are awful, man. Um, they, they don't take risks. They're chickens. And if you miss just one payment, they can take your house away and your cars and everything you own, whatever it is, right? Devastating your, your family. Don't do loans ever, ever, ever. And if you are going to do a loan, I want you to please register your company first as a separate entity, a limited liability corporation, LLC, because that way your liabilities are, yes, limited. Okay. Or it might not be an LLC, might be another type of company structure. I'm not a lawyer. Please go online and find a real lawyer to talk to about that first, because I want to protect you before you start a company. And even if you raise money from uh, high net worth investors and not from a bank, meaning not a loan, um, I still want you to register your company um, because lawsuits happen. 
and you can never tell what kind of you know crazy idiot's gonna is gonna sue you for whatever reason. Uh, and when you make it big and you make a lot of money, uh, which you will if you keep trying, if money's important, you whatever I don't know. Um, people are gonna come after you. It's just human nature. People are greedy, right? There's a lot a lot of bad actors, bad people out there. But if you register your 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 company um, uh, under a different name, um, uh, then you can protect yourself and your family uh, from civil issues. So, and, and for those of you uh, in the United States, um, there's a great website called LegalZoom.com. That's LegalZoom.com, uh, or for the Americans, Z-O-O-M.com. Uh, and if you go there, um, you can get access to any type of lawyer you want that's a specialist in any area. And you just pay a one-time fee for 30 bucks to talk. It's a good deal, right? Not bad, 30 bucks for a lawyer. And I did that when I copyrighted and trademarked my courses and other content as well. Uh, I did that instead of paying 10 grand for some idiot, you know, lawyer that was going to overcharge me. All lawyers are idiots except for civil rights lawyers, by the way, which I love them. That's cool. All right. Unless anyone on this call is a lawyer, I love you too. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I wanted to be a lawyer when I was younger. Isn't that crazy? I think it was because the pressure. My brother got into medical school and I thought, oh my God, I got to do something cool and impress my parents too. I don't know. Uh, and so I, 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 I wrote the LSAT. I hated it. I hated reading comprehension. I went to visit a bunch of law schools. My favorite movie at that time was A Few Good Men with um, Tom Cruise. You can't handle the truth. I visited law schools and I was bored to tears. And I looked at the textbooks and I was bored to tears. I was like, screw that. Um, I would have made a crappy lawyer anyway because I can't lie. All right. Um, all right. Next question I've got here is from John. Uh, follow up from John. Uh, B Corp is a, a public benefit corporation, uh, whereas the full focus is not on shareholders, but both shareholders and public good. Oh, wow. That's awesome. You know, I've, I've, I'm going to be ignorant here and tell you, I've never heard of a B Corp. Um, you know, I'm on the boards of, of a bunch of charities and I've started charities before, um, but they, I, 401c, I can't even remember what charities are, but uh, legally, but I've, I've never heard of B Corp. So sorry, I can't, I can't help you there. And if I ever talk about legal stuff, and this is not a disclosure, well, maybe this is disclosure. Uh, don't, don't take my word for it. Like talk to a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. I'm just a, a business guy. I've taken, I've taken a lot of business law courses at, at university, whatever. And that's how I know. I know enough to be dangerous. That's it. Okay. Uh, or, I, or I don't know enough to be dangerous. All right. Next question is, is a follow-up from, um, uh, from Dante. I have my, have my coffee here first. This is my bulletproof coffee, which gives me insane energy. Like Bradley Cooper in that movie, Limitless. Pretty cool. I've been doing it for three years now. All right. Dante has got a question. Have I created a course about pitching ideas to investors? Ah, I have a friend who connected with a fortune 500 CEO because he's good at pitching ideas. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I, I, I do. Uh, and it's the very first course that I published and it's called fund fundraising advice from a, a successful a venture capitalist. Why did I write the word successful? I don't know. Um, but, um, don't take that course because I'm going to release, I think within the next week, I, I, it's pretty long, a one to two hour speech I gave uh, to, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the MBA class from Asha a wonderful business school in Paris. They were in town recently. I gave him a speech on how to raise money. The contents of that course are going to be in that speech. Um, so watch that, uh, Dante, uh, and um, it, it'll, it'll help you out a lot. Um, but, but, I, but I think the best advice I can give you and everybody in this call, if you want anything in life, is just learn how to network and uh, read my uh, networking book for free. It's uh, haroonventures.com. Download it there for free. Uh, networking is the most important thing in business. Relationships are more important than uh, product knowledge. Um, okay, so uh, Fujimori-san, how are you? Good to hear from you. Good to hear from you. It always brings a smile to my face when, when I see you. Because I used to work with with a guy um, uh, when I was I was at Goldman. I was in Japan. Um, uh, his, his name was uh, was Fujimori, and he was a retail analyst, covered um, Japanese retail companies, and really nice guy. Brings a smile to my face. Hello. <laughs> um, okay, Mac Bell is saying, please don't talk about the 49ers. <laughs> don't worry, I won't. Thank you. Okay. Um, it, and Geronimo's got another question here. Um, Okay. Thank, thank, thank you. I appreciate that comment there. Uh, I watched your speech in Brazil and I would like to caption and translate it to Portuguese. Uh, would you allow that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. I, I, I'm very humbled. Yeah, please, please, please do. Please do. Um, and, um, 
you know, you, you can, uh, you, if you want, just, just download the, download it directly. I'm going to give you guys a, a trick on how to download YouTube videos. Um, obviously please don't do it for copyright reasons. Um, I'm only saying that cause we're live on a YouTube call now. Okay. But here's the name of the, hold on, I'm going to go back, minimize my window. I'm going to look up the name of the product here. You guys should download. It's really good. Uh, where is it? Ah, I can't seem to find it. Sorry, I, I have it on, on my desktop computer. Give me one second. I'm going to look here because it's really helpful. Um, but um, it, it, there's, there's, if you search for YouTube download, you, you can find those uh, and then just download the videos uh, if, if you want to. It's pretty easy to do. Um, one of them is called uh, Clip Converter, cconverter.com. I think if you do that, be careful. Don't open any pop-ups, okay? If other tabs open, close them right away, okay? And obviously, don't install any executables if you have Windows uh, or, or apps if you if you have Mac. But but you can try that out uh, in um, in, in Geronimo, um, uh, that you can download it, and you should be able to download it directly from my, my YouTube page. I think I think I enabled that. Uh, but but thank you, I appreciate that. That speech was was a lot of fun. Um, I, I worked um, an insane number of hours uh, on it, um, and if I hadn't made that course, the sixteen hour course, which is too long. Uh, called the complete presentation of public speaking course, I wouldn't be able to pull it off. I mean, I, I I worked I worked around the clock for like a week on that presentation. It was fun, and for anybody that's going to present at your company, um, you know, try to or 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 at a, another company or wherever it might be, try to do something no one's ever done before. Like what I did. Uh, for those of you who haven't watched it, please watch it. It's a lot of fun. Um, it, it's a, a one of my YouTube uh, uh, videos called uh, "How to Solve Every Problem in the World." But what I did was uh, I had a custom T-shirt made called "The Future of Education." I had a great quote from Malala on the back. Um, I um, I used um, a, a Back to the Future theme, so I put on Marty McFly's red jacket and the crazy hat from Back to the Future Part Two, uh, and I put I had that the glasses from Doc, uh, the Doc, you know. Uh, and uh, anyway, I had a lot of fun doing it. And we went into a time machine in that speech. So. Uh, watch if you get a chance just click on my um my, my my youtube channel it's called how to fix every problem in the world i think i have it profiled now right below um where my, my name is oh my god i talk a lot i'll stop now okay here we go okay um next one is from uh from kenya i have to go like this now when i look at screens like my dad my dad had black my dad had blackberry years ago and he, he tried to look, look at it like like this and i go no dad closer to your mouth or your face right you can see it but i get it now uh, totally off talk, but I got to show this to you, okay? Before I, before I answer your question, get it. So, this is the third rendition of iPhone cases that I've been creating, okay? And, uh, anybody can do it. And so, uh, what what you do is you buy. A, I bought a, a cheap iPhone, the cheapest iPhone case from Apple. Um, it's silicone, okay? Then what I did is I bought uh, silicone glue, and this here. Okay, it's called American Kings. It's it's an RFID blocker which blocks RFID. Okay, um, and uh, because people can steal your credit cards, they walk beside you now. And I glued it to this with silicone. Crazy glue doesn't work. And I left a book on it overnight. Uh, and uh, it's really cool because watch this. It's like, isn't that cool? My cards come up that way there. Uh, and and Willem, I do not have my McLovin card this week. I'm sorry, it wouldn't fit in this. Uh, isn't that cool? And then what I did was I um, I put this on here. You see this? This is, a, you guys have probably seen these pop-up things. And I did it in such a way that the screw there stopped this from moving so that when I'm walking, uh, I can go like this and hold it. So it, it's a pretty badass, uh, uh, badass case. Anyway, it's pretty cool, pretty cool. So way off topic, sorry about that. All right, so where was I? Um, and if you have questions, please type them here. But uh, Kenya's got a, a question. Um, Hi, Chris, I have a question. I'm starting a consulting agency. Um, uh, oh, you, you and Dante should talk. A consulting agency where I and a few friends will start providing services to local businesses. But we will also provide these services on video through an app. Okay, cool. Um, if things go well, I will bring on more people, meaning 300 to 500 people. Cool. I'm thinking of paying them as contractors, uh, 1099. Good idea. Okay. Um, I have, I will only have one partner at my 70, 30 split. I hope you get the 70. Uh, he's the main tech person. 
So my question is, should I start a multi-member LLC or an S corp? Wow. And should we uh, file in the state where we'll be doing uh, in-person business or Delaware? Okay. So uh, I'll, I'll answer the question in a generic way that's helpful to everybody as well. And thank you. It's a wonderful question. I love it. And welcome to the call, Kenny. Uh, so a lot of times you'll see uh, on television, um, you'll see someone will say a Delaware corporation, uh, or or you'll hear you'll see a lot of people. Uh, register in Delaware. The reason why people register in Delaware, which is a state on the East Coast of the United States, for those of you not from the U.S., the reason people register in Delaware ticker DE uh, is because um, it's th there was a lot of lawyers there uh, when the Constitution was created years ago, whatever. Uh, and um, because there's a lot of lawyers there, um, they've kind of figured out the machine on how to crank out legal contracts in a cheaper way. And there's tax reasons too. So that's why you do it that way. I've done Delaware corporations before. Uh, I've done California. My current one is a California S Corp. Uh, it used to be LLC, but S Corp uh, is is good. S Corps are a little bit complicated uh, because uh, S Corps are are where you you're kind of an employee of your company and you pass through all the income to yourself or to others or whatever it is. Uh, an LLC is um, is is probably the the most simplistic structure um, where your liabilities are limited. Your liabilities are limited with an S Corp as well. However, with an S-Corp, you're limited to a certain number of people that own the company or are partnered with the company. Um, a C-Corp has no limitation, much bigger, right? And that's why a lot of companies that are going public will change their corporate structure to C-Corp. But I, I recommend, Kenya, that you you speak with um, speak with a tax lawyer about this or a corporation lawyer, uh, please. And you mentioned Delaware, which means you're, you're looking at doing this in the United States. So go to LegalZoom.com. Uh, this will save you a lot of money. You're going to love me for this. It'll, it'll save you a lot of money. Just go there, okay? And and they'll help you out with that. Now, when it comes to um, creating an app, um, starting an app is really, really tough. I mean, if you want, oh, by the way, if anybody wants to make an app from scratch, take a course on Udemy from Angela Yu. Um, she's incredible. She's based uh, in, in England. She speaks with a British accent, which means she's smarter than me. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, and she has like a 55 hour course on how to make an app, even if you have no tech experience, start there. She's great. Um, but it's, it's really, really hard. Uh, and, and I've passed on most investments I've ever considered in the app sector um, just because they're, they're so fly by night. I'm not talking about your business model, but just in general. Right. Remember when, when the iPhone first came out or Android handsets first came out uh, every week, I'd be so excited with my kids to see the next game, you know, Angry Birds, uh, Field Runners Part One and Field Runner Part Two, which was awesome. They messed it up with Part Three. And you know what I mean there? Um, and then now what's happened is people don't go to the app store as much. Um, there's not that much innovation in the app store anymore. Uh, the top 10 apps are stale. They stay the same. Um, it's just a tough gig. It's a tough gig. Um, so um, anyway. Um, thank you uh, very much for, for the question. I, I appreciate it, uh, Kenya. If I did not answer your question or if you have another question, non-legal question, please type it here uh, and I'll get to it as quickly as I can. For those of you um, that are just joining us, please type your questions right now. And when there's no more questions, I'll wrap up the call. Happy to stay on this call forever though, because this is a lot of fun. Okay, so um, next next question is is from Vyajar. How are you? Hi, Chris. Uh, I've been following you in your courses for quite a while now. Uh, your work is amazing. Thank you. Um, and by the way, if I mispronounce anyone's name, please phonetically write write it down the, the right way. Uh, and I'm sorry for my, my ignorance. Um, I want to ask you, what do you think about a 100% remote uh, corp company culture? Is it attractive for, for uh, investors? Uh, and you're posting from uh, Barcelona. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I love Barcelona. Uh, it was my favorite city in the world by far. And then I visited Rio recently and Rio is pretty close. Yeah, they're both great. Um, so when you set up a company and your employees or business partners are, are remote, um, it, it's tough from a culture perspective. I like that's how I do it, right? I, I have uh, uh, Wrigley who, who works with me, who's, um, who's from, uh, from Brazil. He's out here who helped me a lot with my speech, by the way. Thank you, Wrigley. Um, but I also have my, my production crew uh, uh, for, for my, uh, my, my video trailers over in, in Prague. Um, it, and I have other employees uh, all over the place as well. I use Fiverr.com a lot, contractors. That's five with two R's, F-I-V-E-R.com. Um, 
And from a culture perspective, yeah, I mean, it might be somewhat limiting. Like it does get lonely. Um, you know, I, 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 I work, you know, by myself, for myself, whatever. You know, sometimes I'll go to, to Paris Baguette and hang out there and, and meet with uh, business partners. Um, but, but I think that when it comes to uh, millennials, which are the best generation, they're not used to having one job, okay? And they won't. Uh, and so it's cool for, for them to be, you know, only working part-time for you and working remotely. They love that. Give them the laptop, set them up, that sort of thing. Um, but make sure, I have to say from a culture perspective, um, and I don't do this on purpose, but um, uh, give a lot of feedback. Uh, because um, millennials, for example, uh, I've been told, um, they love feedback. And so if you're older like I am and you're working with millennials, don't forget to provide a lot of feedback, okay? Uh, it, it's important and it will enhance the corporate culture. And one thing I really believe in, I learned this from the, the CEO of uh, a great software company called Splunk. Um, one thing I, I believe in when it comes to managing people is you wanna, you wanna praise in public and criticize in private, okay? There's nothing worse than being berated or critiqued in front of your peers, right? It makes you wanna quit and start a new company, um, which I've done many times. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's just a little bit of feedback there from a cultural perspective. But I, I think it's okay though to have, um, have a lot of remote employees, um, but as long as you're not misleading, I'm, I don't think you would be, but I'm just saying in general, I, I met with a lot of startups uh, and they say, we have 35 employees, blah, 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 blah. And then I always ask, um, where are your employees? And they say, oh, they're all contractors working uh, in, in, in Romania or, or India or Canada or wherever it might be. Uh, just disclose that as well. Um, anyway, or if they're, they're not full-time, you, you got to uh, disclose that as well. So um, hopefully that, that, that answered your, your question. But uh, one other thing I'll say is, as you are growing your company, it applies to everybody, um, you want to have your sales reps um, close to the customer because business is about relationships, okay, first and then uh, business second. So um, I'm just going to put my phone on the floor. It's ringing. Uh, be, have your, have your, your, your salespeople close to where your customers are. And what Cisco does, a uh, great networking company here in the Bay Area, is they'll actually have employees that only have one customer, one account. And that employee will basically live at that customer's office, right? It's usually a massive office. And uh, they'll just work there all the time, okay? So anyway, um, it's kind of a long-winded answer. Sorry for that. Um, Okay, uh, and then Cassandra has got a question from Chris Hernandez. Um, we're, we're starting an important an import business where only Mike and I are going to make the deals and do the work. Uh, we are for and contribute equally to the initial investment. How should um, Mike and I, meaning Mike and Chris Hernandez, build a company and share the profit in that case? Mike and I feel that it won't be fair uh, in the future to split the profit equally in four if only we we two are, are working. Okay, I got you, okay. So it, it's hard. I, I've been in partnerships in the past um, where I've owned a little bit less than others. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm gonna go there. I did more work than others. Uh, and it, it demotivated me, right? Um, it would have been really nice if they approached me uh, and and said, uh, "Chris, um, you know, you, you've you've contributed so much, and it doesn't feel right, and so we're going to give you more. Uh, so we're all equal partners." I would have really appreciated that. Uh, and my last firm, a uh, venture capital firm, we all split the economics evenly. That was that was great. Um, but I think it's smart to split evenly. Um, and, and think about how rock and roll bands work, right? Think about the Beatles. Um, I, I think all of them were paid the same, even though Lennon McCartney took credit for a lot of the songs. But imagine if if George made way less than everybody else, meaning less than Ringo, Paul, and John. I'm sure he'd be pretty upset and that you'd want to break up the band and whatever. 
Um, but, but I think that in general, rock and roll bands, uh, if they started it themselves, they all got the same amount of money, like like that the best rock band ever. And I'm not I'm not <clears throat> biased, but it's called Rush, R U S H. The best album ever made is called Twenty One Twelve. Listen to it today, please. But Getty Lee, Neil Peart, um, the three of them, they 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 all made the same amount and in, in, in the uh, in the company. So I think splitting it evenly makes sense. Um, and unless uh, I have to say, Chris. Um, unless you decide that somebody else should own more than you. And I know this is a little bit out there, but I'll give you an example. I'm creating a course right now uh, with, with this guy uh, named um, uh, uh, Michael uh, Geller. Uh, and we're, we're creating this course together. And he used to work at, at Google and at Udemy. Uh, and um, we talked last night about the economics. And the course, by the way, it's coming out within a couple of weeks. Uh, it's going to be uh, about uh, Google AdWords and how does all that stuff work. And, and I suck at that and he's great at it. And so he's done most of the work. I met him in Brazil, actually. He's done most of the work and we're supposed to split it 50-50. And we had a call yesterday and I said, you know what? It just doesn't, it doesn't feel ethical to split 50-50. You've, you've done most of the work. Uh, and most Udemy teachers, when they bring somebody else on to teach them, usually they, they split it 50-50. Um, uh, and this is uh, you know his first course. And, and so I told him, I said, look, doesn't feel ethical. I want you to keep 75% forever. Uh, and I felt really good doing that too. <laughs> he's a good dude. Uh, and so um, he's doing most of the work, obviously. So he deserves it. He deserves more than 75%. Um, so I, I think that if somebody, if it's implicit that somebody's going to do more of the work, maybe that person should get paid more. If if you're, you have a startup of four people and three people are full-time, one person's part-time, uh, then the part-time person should own less. Um, that's what I would say. That's what I would say. But, you know, Chris, might, what you might want to do is you might want to dangle a carrot that you might give them more equity uh, if they um, if they perform exceptionally well. OK. Um, or you can just tell them that through your, your import, export business, import business, that um, the commission structure is unlimited for them. OK. Even though they own less of the company, um, their commission structure is unlimited. So anyway, um, hopefully that, that, that answers the, the question for you. Uh, and then uh, uh, Chris, uh, Chris and Mike, who are asking this question, make sure you hire a lawyer to do all the paperwork first, okay? And that goes for everybody on this call. If, if you work for somebody else and, and they give you a contract, okay, uh, like if you're going to own part of the company, then I want you to hire a lawyer to look at that contract, okay, always. Because the person that gave you that contract, their lawyer doesn't give a damn about you. That lawyer is just protecting them and not you. Okay, um, so just 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 understand that. All right, um, and and Chris and Mike, if if I didn't answer that properly, or if you have a follow up, please ask me right now. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, uh, next question I've got is uh, from um, uh, from Dante. Uh, Dante asked great questions as well. Um, I'm just going to read it here. Hold on. Um, do I know anyone who's good at digital marketing? I've been trying to find a mentor in this field, but it's difficult to find a true expert. How do I implement it in my own business? So digital marketing is really, really tough. And marketing is the toughest thing in business. Um, I, I used to, when I was in business school, I didn't take any marketing courses because I thought it was bullshit. I thought, you know, business is common sense. You've either got it or you don't, but you got to learn finance and accounting because that's a different language. But marketing is a different language now, and it's uh, it's important because of the emergence of technology platforms for marketing. The CMO position or chief marketing officer did not exist when I was in business school. It's a big deal. Um, it's very complicated, Dante, because what happens is I've never been good at this because I always love measuring things. I'm a quantitative person. But what happens is it takes sometimes seven or eight or nine times for somebody to see a commercial for a product before they buy it. And how do you measure that, man? It's so hard. Um, so it, it's tough. It's tough to do. Um, Dante, what I would say, there's a guy named Isaac. I can't remember his last name, but he teaches a, a very comprehensive uh, uh, marketing course on Udemy. Try his out or just look on my profile in a couple of weeks. We will have that course up soon, the one I've got the 25% share of. Uh, and maybe that, that will help you out. Um, but it's really tough and you got to stay on top of this stuff. It changes all the time. Like 
I've even noticed that, you know, a lot of a lot of courses online where people will will upload stuff about Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn, it goes out of date pretty fast. And I've been updating some of my older content because of that as well. But you're always learning. You're always learning, uh, Dante. It, it's tough. Um, so anyway, that's what I'd recommend. Uh, and then Dante, you mentioned that you, I think you went to University of Alberta or Calgary. I can't remember. Find alumni there that, that are experts in this field and, and they'll be more than happy to meet with you and help you out. Okay. All right, Aditya, how are you? This is the first time I've seen you on the call. Thank you, Aditya. I hope you hope you join us again. Uh, hi, Chris, nice to hear you. Nice to, nice to, to read you too. Um, I want to move to, I want to move into it, uh, an equity analyst role. Okay, so equity analysts, for those that don't know, are experts on a certain sector and they work for investment banks usually. Okay, so for example, at Goldman Sachs, there's one person who is an expert on industrial stocks and this person covers Caterpillar and maybe Komatsu. There's another person that's an equity analyst at Goldman Sachs or Morgan Stanley, I'll say in this case, uh, that uh, is an expert in retail stocks and they cover you know, The Gap, uh, Tiffany, et cetera. So the question here from Aditya is: You want to uh, you want to prepare a research report. Um, um, you're learning from my course and other books. What should I do to achieve things? Okay, so I have a course, uh, uh, and for those of you um, that haven't asked questions yet, please ask questions. We're almost out of questions here. And once the questions are all done, we're gonna wrap up the call. It's not a threat. I love you, but please write down your questions. Uh, so I have a course where I teach you how to create. Uh, um, an initiation report, an equity analyst report. And it's called uh, the Complete Financial Analyst Training and Investing Course. It's, um, I think it's about 20 hours long. Um, and, both in, and in this course, I pretend that I hire you uh, to work for my firm called uh, Morgan Haroon Sachs. Okay, don't sue me, Morgan or Goldman, please. Uh, and and you go through the, my training program over 20 hours and you rotate in different divisions, including an equity analyst, a trader, an investment banker, uh, a sell site, all that stuff. Anyway, private equity. But take that course, uh, DTF, if you haven't already, uh, because um, it, it will teach you how to create a, a report and a model. And at the back of your, your sell side uh, uh, research report, um, you always have to include financials in the appendix. Okay, so you'll see on that course, it'll teach you everything you need to know. Okay, that's why I highly recommend taking it um, because it's based on real practical experience and not based on theory. Don't ever learn from people that are just teaching theory. Um, like I remember when I was an undergrad and I learned, it was BS, man. I had fun when I learned how to do this. Um, <laughs> I remember I in calculus class, like I haven't really used that stuff or economics class, supply and demand charts. I've never used that stuff. Um, and, and you know, the, the, the professors were, 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 were book smart. You know, some of them had experience, but a lot didn't. Uh, don't ever take courses from people that have not um, done it. And my dad used to say, uh, don't ever take advice from somebody that's not successful. I'm not saying I'm successful, but I've, I've worked in a number of different industries and I know what the drivers are to make you successful. And I want to help you. Okay. Okay. Um, thanks for the follow up there, um, Cassandra. All right. Dane, question from Dane. Dane, how are you, man? Uh, good to have you. Um, uh, completely agree. Never too late to grow and learn. Start something new. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. I completely agree. Okay. Dante's got another question. Uh, how do I find what services people need if I want to start uh, an internet company? Um, and how do I do the research on my competitors? Okay, good. Okay, so let me, let me start with the, the competitors part. Um, and, and I've been thinking a lot about this and, and I'm writing, I'm making a vlog now in a course that deals with this. Here's how you do competitive intelligence, okay? You go and you find your competitor's Twitter feeds and you look at who they're following, okay? Because big companies usually don't follow as many people. Like for example, Bill Gates, if you look at his Twitter profile, the only company that he follows that is not a Microsoft-based entity or a charity is Udemy. It's pretty cool, he follows Udemy. Um, but, but go to your competitors and the CEOs of your competing firms and see who they follow because they probably follow their biggest customers in case you ever want to, you know, talk to those customers one day, you can learn a ton about what, who what people follow. And it's dangerous too. Um, just like on, don't ever put your LinkedIn profile, uh, that you're, um, you follow a, a Democrat or a Republican. Okay. Because half the people are going to hate you. I don't know which half. <laughs> 
Uh, and the same thing with Twitter. Don't careful if you follow politicians, unless you don't care what people think about your political affiliation. Okay, so that's one way to get competitive intelligence. See who they're following. Another way is this, Dante. Um, go to uh, Google Alerts. Okay, and everybody should do this. Go to Google Alerts and set up an automatic alert so you get an email the second anything is posted online about your competition or companies you're interested in or your own name. <laughs> Um, anyway, yeah, you, you can do that. Uh, another way to get competitive intelligence is go to LinkedIn and see what the background is of those employees. Okay. Another way is to go to the website of the company and go to the investor relations part of the website, if they're publicly traded and read all their financial uh, documents. Okay. Listen to their analyst day webcasts. Right. And the DTO, you should do that as well as you as you learn how to write great analyst reports. Um, and then also, um, what else can you do? Um, you can uh, go to sec.gov if it's an American based company and, you know, type in 10K to read the annual report or S1 to read uh, the IPO filing documents, that sort of thing. Or every press release they've ever given, which is called an 8K on sec.gov. Um, these are great ways to do competitive intelligence. You can also search online, obviously, uh, to, to learn about um, industries. Like sometimes great consulting firms like McKinsey or the Boston Consulting Group or Monitor or Bain or Deloitte, uh, but not Accidenture. Um, sometimes they'll, uh, they'll publish these, um, these industry reports online you can get for free. Okay. Um, and and um, also, um, uh, Dante, my, my course, I'm working really hard in this course now. Um, it's so much fun, but it'll be out soon. Okay. The, 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 the complete business plan course. Um, and, uh, Dante, I'm going to give it to you for free and, and everybody on this call too. just remind me, okay. That the day when I release it, they give you a code, uh, and, and it will help you to, um, size up the competition, uh, and, um, and, um, what services you, you, you might want to uh, start. And the, the point of this course also that I'm making is, I want to humbly help you. I want to save you money and, and heartache and years on your life because I want to help you understand if you have a good business model or not. Okay. Um, and, and if it's great, then yes, quit your company. Uh, if it's not, don't quit yet. And you only have to be right in business one time, but it's kind of like my mission to, to help you be successful and independent and, you know, give, give you the tools to be able to learn, earn and return. Um, that sort of thing. And, and, and when the course comes out, um, again, it'll be called the complete business plan course. I think that's the name of it. Um, join me every week, everybody on this call and, and ask me questions, um, about a business plan as you complete that, that, uh, the template that I'm going to provide you in the course, um, because I, I want to help you be independent. And there's, I'm going to say my second and last swear word on this, this call, um, there's nothing worse than spending the rest of your life being someone else's bitch. Um, we weren't meant to work for somebody else our entire lives. Okay. It's okay to work for a couple of different companies, uh, as many people in this call have already, because you learn what to do and what not to do. Okay. Uh, but, um, anyway, I, I want y'all to take that course when it comes out. Um, and then join me every week and ask me questions about your business model or potential business model. And for those of you that work at a big company and you don't have, um, uh, and, and you don't have, uh, uh, and, and you've, you've put your real name here, but you want to hide what your real name is, then create a new YouTube account and, and, you know, follow me and ask me questions on, on the webcast that way. Okay. Um, all right, great. So, um, let me just scroll down here. And again, if anybody has questions, please uh, type them in now. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I got a, there's somebody named young by choice. What a great name. Young by choice. I love that young by choice. Do me a favor. Type in if you made that up or you got it from somewhere else, because I think that is the most brilliant, uh, username I've ever seen. You're young by choice. It's so true. Whether you're, you're young at heart. Um, you know, Frank Sinatra used to say it's, it's all up here. What you think? Oh man, I fucking love that. Thank you. Sorry. That's awesome. Young by choice. That is awesome. No one's ever old by choice. And I remember when I was younger, man, I remember I used to laugh so hard until it hurts. Why don't we do that anymore? Why don't we laugh hard like that until it hurts?
because we're older and stuff. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. So young by choice. I love it. I love it. And by the way, I've just started playing Fortnite with my kids. They just signed me up for an account. Okay. Um, and I'm going to be young with them. I'm bonding with them this way. And for anyone out there who plays Fortnite, it's ridiculous. Like at first I was playing it and when somebody's shooting at you, you don't jump up and down in real life. So why do you do that Fortnite? I don't get it. And what, what is this jumping off of a bus thing? I don't get it. Um, anyway, um, we have, we have topic there. Young by choice. God, I love that. Okay. Hola, Chris. Hola, young by choice or YBC. Um, when you want to invest, uh, how do I choose a broker? Okay, great. So the way you choose a broker is as follows. Um, and I'm going to make this generic enough so it doesn't matter what country you're in. Okay. So for those of you that have taken my um, complete personal finance course, you know that if you go to the settings tab, enter in your country name, I automatically populate the five biggest banks in your country. And call all five of those banks and ask them, what is the name of the brokerage firm associated with that bank. And because it's a big bank, the top five banks in any country, um, the uh, the brokerage firm uh, is probably a division of that bank and it's probably credible. Okay. So for example, uh, in, in Canada, um, there's, there's five or six banks. Uh, it's a very regulated economy. Uh, and one of the biggest banks in Canada is called uh, CIBC. And uh, I used to do consulting work at CIBC when I was at Accenture. And we used to say that CIBC stands for Constantly in bed with consultants. Yeah, just kidding. Sorry, it's a Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce, part of the Commonwealth. And CIBC has Wood Gundy, I think they have a brokerage division that, that I used to use, investors, I can't remember what it was called, but they all have it. And so once you get the, the top five banks in your country, that list, and you call all of them and you get the brokerage names of the five that they have, I want you to pick the one that has the lowest commission rates. Okay. And they're, they're usually pretty competitive with each other. Do that. Uh, and what you can also do, if if you want, um, is just use a, a large a, a large brand that's reputable, you know, like uh, like Schwab, uh, talk to Chuck, <laughs> or you can um, you can you can um, uh, use um, E Trade. That's reputable as one well, as well. Just be careful uh, and make sure it's very reputable, very reputable. And if you want, go to uh, the the BetterBusinessBureau.org website or whatever it is. And, and do research on these companies before you uh, do business with them so you can find out if they're legit or not. Or, or And ask your mom and dad uh, or your rich aunt, 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 we say aunt, rich aunt or uncle, uh, what, what they've used before. Okay. So um, anyway, that, that's, what I, that's what I would say. And, and um, uh, YBC, that's young by choice. We're, we're buddies now, we're partners. Um, talk to friends of yours that, that have done it. Okay. That have done it as well, and, and ask them because I don't know what where you're located, uh, geographically speaking. All right, next question. And again, if you have questions, please type them now. When there's no more questions, I'll wrap up the call. Um, so, Geronimo's got a question. Besides your MBA course, which is the next one on my list? Um, what would be the next course you would recommend to someone trying to build a freelancer education slash IT business? God, that's hard. Okay, besides my entire MBA one course, what do I recognize next? It's hard. It's like, it's like you asking me, which, which child of mine do I love most? Right. Um, I love Andrew most, by the way, and Matthew and Dylan, if you're watching, sorry. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I love them all the same. Um, God, it's tough. Okay. So you want to, you want to build, okay. You're building a business. God, it's hard. You, you know what I would recommend Geronimo is I think in business, there's a couple of things that are not common sense. You just have to learn the basics um, and stuff that is not taught, uh, that, 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 that is not common sense. You got to learn is uh, accounting and finance. So take my course actually called Introduction to Finance, Accounting, Modeling, Evaluation. It's kind of long. Uh, Introduction to Finance. And it's four and a half hours. It'll teach you everything you need to know about finance and accounting in a fun way too. Like the balance sheet. Like I, I try to explain why things are called what they are. And that way you'll remember it like a balance sheet. You know, why is it called a balance sheet? Because what you own is, is uh, what you own is either owned by you, meaning equity, or, or someone you have a loan to. So it balances out. So if you have a $500 car and you own $250 of it, uh, and the other $250 is a loan from the bank of Toyota, then the $500 car here balances with you, 
right? Equity, 250 bucks, you own it. And then 250 bucks from the, the bank of Toyota, that's debt, it balances. So, so I would take that one. Uh, and then after that one, um, God, it's hard. Probably the complete presentation course because <clears throat> people are not taught how to, how to present. Um, that, that might be helpful as well. Uh, and that course is um, 16 hours. I've had complaints that it's too long. Um, but um, anyway, I, I think it's worth it because one speech can change your life. Okay. All right. And I'm starting to make shorter courses now. Okay. Um, I'm trying like this complete, this complete business plan course. I, I can't stop. There's so much I want to put into it. So it's <clears throat> anyway, hopefully it's not too long for you guys. All right. So Dante, another question here. Um, do I know any financial or IT companies that offer training and hire new employees from non-financial or IT backgrounds? I'm looking for clear direction. Thanks a lot. Okay. So all right, so Dante, if if you're, I think you mentioned you're, you're Montreal or Ottawa. Um, there's a guy I went to business school with at, at Columbia um, who's brilliant. And he has a company that trains people in finance. Uh, and this goes for anybody in Toronto. Um, and his name is John Zellman. Uh, last name is uh, Zed. That's how you say Z. Z Z-E-L-M-A-N. Just Google him. You, you'll find him. Um, and if you're in Toronto, take the course from his firm. He, he's great. And <clears throat> without him, I would have failed finance in business school. And I got a D in accounting, by the way, uh, when I took it in undergrad. Isn't that terrible? And I thought my life was over. I was at McGill University. I was at my parents' cottage uh, up in Muskoka. It was the summer of 1991, I think. 91, yeah. Uh, and, and I called up uh, Mars, which is McGill Automated Registration Service, McGill University. And I got my grades. And, and the lady computer said, uh, grade for accounting, D. And, and I thought, fuck, I thought my life was over. But I got a D in accounting because I did something dumb, which was I was memorizing it instead of understanding it. And the difference between high school and university is high school, you can do well if you memorize stuff. In university, you can't do well if you do that unless it's biology because you got to actually understand stuff. And once you understand stuff in business, right, you'll never forget it. Okay. And so, uh, when, when it comes to accounting and finance, Dante, and this goes for everybody, when you're learning this stuff, try to understand why, why, why. If you're given an equation, assets equals liabilities plus equities, rearrange the equation, understand why it exists that way. Why, why, why? Uh, that, that sort of thing. So um, anyway, hopefully that, that helps. All right, next one is from, uh, from Dan. Awesome, Dan. Dan says, uh, my girlfriend is getting her MBA from Harvard. Uh, Bain is picking up the tab. That, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, I, Dan, I got to tell your girlfriend this, okay? Um, most people that, that, that they're, they're at Harvard Business School, or they're basically living at Soldier's Field now, they don't know that when McKinsey comes to campus and they wine and dine you, they spend over a million dollars a year whining and dining Harvard Business School students. And most of them, they know, never want to work at McKinsey. But the reason they want and dine and spend a million bucks every year is because they know that their future customers, meaning future CEOs, are probably at HBS, two thirds of which is not BS. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. That's great. Uh, and, and, and a lot of times when, um, like I went to, when I went to, to, to business school in, in New York, there was a guy from, uh, from China, Kevin Chi, great guy. And he worked at Boston Consulting Group in Beijing. And they paid for his MBA, um, which, which was pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Big consulting firms will, will do that. Um, and, and this is off topic. It was kind of interesting. Um, this was 1999. And I asked Kevin, I said, Kevin, just curious. Uh, did you guys study American history when you were a kid in China? Uh, and he said, oh, yeah, of course. And I said, wow, what, 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 did you, like, what did they teach you? And it was fascinating. He said, well, they taught us everything as it actually happened. But on day one, the first thing we started with when we learned about American history is we started with the Great Depression. And, and I thought that was fascinating because, you know, it was, it, it was a, a more communist country then. It's it slowly moving to, to capitalism, slowly smart. Otherwise, you end up like Russia, which is, yeah, anyway, I'm not going there. Uh, but, but the first impression that they teach in school about capitalism, at least back then, which was ages ago, uh, was the Great Depression. So a little off topic there. But uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that story. All right. Th thanks, Dan. And Dan, I didn't, I did not get into Harvard Business School, uh, but uh, my, my mentor uh, in, in life, uh, Jason Denny did. Um, he's, he's a great guy. Uh, and, and by the way, like I, 
I remember this guy, Jason, I worked with him at Accenture, Denny, D-E-H, and I, you can Google him, um, went to his wedding up here in, in Napa Valley recently, my best friend ever, he's at my wedding party. I only, only hang out with people that are very positive. And I don't care how old you are, or how young you are. I want you to, I want you to watch a vlog I made, okay? Uh, it's got a picture of Oscar the Grouch on it, on get, get these people out of your life right now. And people like Jason were amazing for me because, you know, he was a very positive person. You know, the, the glass is always half full. It's not half empty. And you'll find that if you eliminate people with negative attitudes in your life, you'll be much happier and much more successful as well. It, you know, for me, it's, it's, it's one strike you're out. Okay. It used to be two or three or a hundred, uh, when I was younger, um, there's no room in your life for somebody negative. Okay. They bring you down. And if it's family, I get it. It's tough, whatever. Um, I'm not going to go there, but if you have a friend that is even slightly condescending to you, they're out for fucking ever. Okay. I'm swearing a lot today. Sorry. Um, they're gone. They're gone. Okay. Um, and you'll know who your real friends are because Obviously, when you don't do well in life, they'll help you. But also, when you do exceptionally well, they'll say congratulations in a really good, sincere way instead of like, um, oh, yeah, congratulations, you know, whatever. A um, little off topic there. But but I really believe that if you cut off people that are that are negative, uh, one strike you're out, uh, you'll be much more successful and much happier um, in life. So um, anyway, next up. Uh, Shamlin, uh, oh, a Kuwaiti government. So uh, Shamlin earlier in the call uh, uh, had a question. He said he was given an opportunity to do a three-year technology degree from the government for free. Uh, and I asked what government, and he said uh, the, the, the Kuwaiti government um, to study in London. Wow, man, that's a great deal. That's awesome. Um, and he wrote, wrote here, I don't work for a company, but I founded a sportswear website last year by working it. Good for you. I graduated from college, but I thought about um, taking IT will help will help me. Yeah, I think that take take courses on on online on Udemy, and, and I'm not just exclusive to Udemy. You can go anywhere else. Uh, although I I love Udemy, um, learn stuff um, online, right? So you can learn if you want to learn technology stuff from scratch. There's this this uh, this guy in England um, named Rob Percival. And he teaches the complete web developer course. And I don't care how old or how young you are. I want you to do this right now. If you've always been curious on how do I make a website? How do I make an app on my Android handset or my iPhone? How do I do that? How do I make a video game? Um, you can learn from scratch. You know, stop putting this off. If you're curious about it, sign up, man. These things are cheap. Take a course from Rob Percival called the complete web developer course. Um, or from, from Angela Yu, uh, they're amazing. Or there's a guy named, uh, Tristan can't remember his last name. He teaches, um, video games, right? Like how to make video games from scratch. Even if you have no program experience at all, you know, it's never too late to start over. You want to be a seven year old rock star, be the first one, do it now. Um, make it happen, make it happen. And the beautiful thing is that you can, People don't have as much respect today for degrees as they used to. You know, here in the Bay Area, it might be a little bit different, but if I hear somebody tell me they went to Stanford, I'm like, shut the fuck up. Like, I, it's it's not, I'm swearing, I'm sorry, but you're only as good as your last game, I mean, the last job you had. And you can learn stuff online, okay? So anyway, learn new skills online. Anybody can do it. And you know what I'm doing now, which, which is awesome, is... Um, there's, there's a website called masterclass.com and I signed up for it. And I, I'm actually learning um, uh, from a guy named Ken Burns on how to make documentary movies, right? And he made this great documentary on the Vietnam War uh, as well as uh, baseball and a lot of other great stuff. And my goal in life, and you have to vocalize your goals. You have to tell people your goals because it'll force you to do it. Like if you want to write a book, I used to tell people, I'm going to write a book and write a book. And they're like, Chris, when's that book ready? I'm like, soon. Eventually I got it done. My goal is I want to get an Academy Award one day. Uh, I'll give myself 10 years. An Academy Award for making a business documentary. Okay, so um, that's why with my vlogs, I'm trying to increase the quality, make it better than it used to be. 
Um, anyway, whatever. Um, but I'm learning from masterclass.com um, on, on how to make these films. I'm also uh, taking a course at the same time on masterclass.com uh, from Ron Howard, uh, who is a great director. He was on Happy Days years ago. I'm dating myself. Uh, and I'm taking a course from, uh, from Hans Zimmer. Thank you, Germany. Anybody from Germany? Thank you for Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer wrote the soundtrack for um, basically every great movie, you know, Inception, um, uh, anyway, Interstellar, slow movie, but crazy soundtrack. Uh, and I'm learning how to write music. I don't have much of a background in that area, but he's teaching me. And my kids have access to a course from Steph Curry, who's a great basketball player uh, on Masterclass. Anyway, check it out. It's, it's, it's pretty fun, pretty fun. And it's real cheap, hell of a lot cheaper. Like imagine this. Like on Udemy, if you want to learn about journalism, don't learn from me. I'm not a successful journalist. Learn from Dan Rather. He has a course on Udemy on this. You want to learn about tennis, learn from Andre Agassi, right? There's a psychology of sports as well. Confidence is really important. He's got a course on Udemy. You know, and, and these things are cheap. And, and never in the past have you been able to learn from people that are amazing at what they do for such a low price. It's amazing. What a great time to be alive. Okay, great. Um, and by the way, Young by Choice, I don't know if you've answered yet. Uh, I have to scroll down, but I want to know how you came up with that name, Young by Choice. I love it. I'll get to the bottom. I'll get to the bottom as soon. I'm still scrolling down. Uh, if you have questions, please type them. When I don't see any more questions, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up. All right, next question I've got is uh, from uh, Arun. Arun, I always love having you on the call because you rhymes with my last name. Thank you. Um, and, and by the way, Arun, my, my last name I, I found out is um, it, it's it's Moses's brother, Aaron. Um, and, and and apparently I didn't know this, but but Moses had a bit of, big of a speech impediment, apparently, and his brother Harun or Aaron they called him uh, uh, helped him with that. Who knows if it's if it's real? I read it on the internet, so it's true. Okay, uh, Arun's got a question: Which particular sector or job would you suggest I get into after business school? Uh, keep in mind the skills acquired and growth, which will eventually help me with a shift into entrepreneurship. Okay, great question. All right, so, all right, here's a great way to answer that question for everybody that is looking for a job and you're not sure what you wanna do. The, if you create a product, you're more marketable, and I'll explain how. In finance, if you're not sure what to do, do investment banking, because investment bankers create the IPO Okay, and then what happens is after they create the initial public offering, then they let other people sell it and market it and stuff. But if, you, if you're an investment banker and you create the IPO, okay, you create all the paperwork, whatever, then it's easier for you if you ever want to transition within finance into sales, trading, private equity, hedge fund, that sort of thing. Okay, private wealth management, whatever. So you're creating the product. That was finance. Now in technology, if like at Google, if you're an engineer and you create the code, you create the software, Google Labs stuff, whatever, you're a rock star there, right? And and there's it's like there's a, there's a class of employees in some companies in tech. It goes engineer, everybody else. But if you create the product, meaning engineer, right, then it's easier for you to sell the product, market the product, do whatever you want with it, make the product, whatever it is. And, and a lot of people... Uh, Always say in Silicon Valley, it's easier to teach finance to um, an engineer than engineering to a finance person. Okay, although I think you still can online. Okay, so I've talked about um, the finance example: investment bankers making the product go this way. Unless you're in England, sorry. <laughs> I, I talked about um, uh, um, uh, in technology making the product, engineering. Third example is if you're in consulting, right? If you work for McKinsey. Uh, or, or, or um, if you work for, for, for Bain, like, uh, like Dan's, uh, uh, Dan's girlfriend does, um, what happens is you're creating the corporate strategy. And if you create the corporate strategy of a company, meaning if you work in consulting, it's easier to implement that corporate strategy or, or going to sales marketing, whatever it is. And so the bottom line is this. If you're not sure what to do from business school, company-wise, but you want to do something that's going to help you raise money or start your own company one day, do something in origination. Okay. Finance, it's investment wanking, banking, sorry. Uh, God, this is live, terrible. Um, in uh, in, in uh, consulting uh, uh, it, it strategy, it's it's uh, Bain or McKinsey sort of thing. Uh, and then um, within tech, it's it's engineering. So just do origination. Uh, and um, also, uh, Arun, 
if if you go to a business school where you can intern after the first year or second or after, between the first year and second year, I want you to experiment. Okay. The great thing about business school is if you don't know what you want to do in life, you can experiment between year one and year two in the summer by doing an internship. Okay. So anyway, that, that's what I would say. But Arun, follow your heart too. Right. Just follow follow what you follow what you love doing in life most. Okay. That, that's gotta be your passion. And be careful, Arun, when you graduate. Um, you know, a lot of my, my business school classmates, uh, are miserable or were miserable. And I was miserable until, you know, recently, I guess don't chase money. Yeah. All right. Um, because any successful entrepreneur, almost all of them, they don't chase money. They just do what they love doing. Right. They do what they love, like, like Elon Musk. It's not about chasing money. It's about helping humanity. It's about colonizing Mars. I know it's nutty. But it's not, that's not money. So Richard Branson loves what he does. If you ever take a, if you ever go on a, a flight from Virgin America or Virgin Atlantic, the people that work on the, on those planes, they just love what they do. They have a great joie de vivre, um, that sort of thing. So just do what you love doing in life. Okay. So next one I've got is from uh, Rudina. Hey, how are you? Morning, Chris. Uh, what is the website to find a good and reasonable lawyer in Canada? Thanks. God, that's hard. Uh, BetterCallSaul.com. .ca. Sorry. Um, I don't know, you know, do a search online on, uh, 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 and this goes for anybody in any country outside the United States, um, do a search on legal zoom, legal zoom equivalents in Canada or in Scotland or whatever country you're in. Uh, and, and that will help you out, uh, a, a lot. That, that, that's what I would say. Um, and if it's a small practice, you can always go to Yelp and just do research on them to find out if, if, if they're, they're, they're worth it or, or, or not. Uh, and, and I have to ask whoever tells me and Willem, you, you're, you're batting a thousand so far. Uh, whoever tells me where better call Saul came from, uh, what show, uh, enter it in now. Okay. And you got to name the, the, the person that made that show that created that show. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. Um, Next, oh, oh you're, you're, you're most welcome, Kenya, thank you. All right, Keel, hey, how are you? Uh, sir, is it worth contacting investors through LinkedIn? Absolutely, but never ask for anything over LinkedIn, except do you have time for a coffee? Okay, so, and read my networking book. I feel like a broken record player, I'm sorry, uh, but you can go to haroonventures.com. And, and there what you can do is just read my networking book for free, and it'll teach you how to get meetings with anybody. Okay. Um, and, um, it, it'll, it'll teach you how to get, uh, investors as well, because you'll get these meetings with potential investors, uh, and then you'll, you'll ask them in person. And I explain how to do it in that, in that book again, which is free. Okay. Next question, Miguel, how are you? Chris, you mentioned Tam every time. Plus you want 5% share of $1 billion company. A little difficult if you're not tech savvy out here in Palo Alto, uh, where, where I am. Uh, I'd love to buy you coffee. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. You know what I'm going to do actually is 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 this, and it breaks my heart, David. I don't see you on the call. That's at Mr. Nitro, uh, but uh, David, who's uh, local as well, um, mentioned this. And what I'll do one week is we'll do a an in person um, hangouts. How's that? Okay, just like like uh, the the YouTube live thing uh, here here in the Bay Area. Okay. Um, Okay. So, but that you mentioned, okay. So for those of you not sure what, what that means, the 5% share of, of, for TAM. So TAM stands for total addressable market. And you never want to start a company unless the size of the market, the TAM, total addressable market TAM isn't massive. And there are venture capital firms like Kleiner Perkins out here uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in Menlo Park that a lot of the times they won't want to invest in the company unless the TAM is 20 billion because they want that company to get 5% share at a minimum longer term, which means a billion dollars in annual revenue. And most companies uh, that venture capital firms invest in go belly up. So if, if they're going to be successful, they're going to want to hit it big. And and Arun, please remember this when you start your, your company out of business school, make sure the TAM is, is, is enormous. There's a crow outside my, my window here or my, my door of my studio. If it's loud, let me know. I can, I can shut the door. Okay, um, but I'm not all only about tech. I mean, you can start any company that's got a massive TAM in any sector, right? Um, even the restaurant business, 
right? There's um, a good buddy of mine, actually, um, uh, Mac, Bell, Mac Bell, you'll love this. A, a really good friend of mine, um, he started uh, the Arabic version of Chipotle out here, and he's got five or six restaurants. It's called Saj, S-A-J-J, Saj. Um, and his falafel is so good that after you eat it, you won't feel, you won't feel awful. Sorry, that's dad humor. Uh, but he's franchising it. He's growing it. That, that, that wasn't a commercial for all you. Uh, but, but that's how he's thinking about it. The restaurant industry is massive. So think about it in that, that, that way as well. And, and Mac Bell, if there's a certain sector you're interested in talking about, you know, let, let me know. Let me know. And, and I'd be more than happy to, 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 to discuss with you here over, over this webcast. Uh, let me know. I'm, I'm happy to help you. I, I want to help all of you start your own business so you can be independent. Okay, and live your life on your own terms and not have to drive to the corporate picnic every year, which is a euphemism for forced family fun, not to have to drive to it and do what I did, which was, Andrew, make sure you're polite to, to the boss, that sort of thing. And I'm going to tell you a real story here. It's very embarrassing, but Andrew, this is, all, dude, this, this is terrible. Okay, so when Andrew was five, right, my, my oldest son, um, he came to my office. Right. And I drove him into, I thought it'd be kind of cool to bring my kid to work. And um, my, my, um, my boss, I'll just say that. Okay. Uh, my, my boss was at the time was, was, was overweight. He's not anymore. Um, and he was a lot older than me. And, and I told Andrew, um, Andrew, when you see him, I want you to stick your hand out and say, uh, very nice to meet you, Mr. Jones, or whatever his name was. And so we got to the event or we got to my office and he, he did it. He goes, very nice to meet you. Right. And as he was saying, I was like, oh my God, it's amazing. Thank you, God. He did this. He goes, very nice to meet you, big fat old man. Right. And it was, oh my God, dude, it was awful. It was, I mean, I could kind of maybe smile and laugh, but now at the time, oh, it was terrible. Uh, but I mentioned that because it's it's like that movie, Christmas Vacation with Chevy Chase. Remember when he gave that that present to, to his boss and he's shaking everyone's hand. You remember that scene, right? Uh, just being political. There, there's nothing worse in life than living your life, not being yourself. And and I want you all to be able to start your own company so you can be yourself. And I don't know, um, be young by choice. Okay. All right. Um, all right, Jason. Yeah, hey, Jason. Yes, 2112. And Anthem is one of my favorite books. Awesome, dude. That, that rocks. Rush. Rush, that's awesome. Good stuff. All right. Um, I love that song. Uh, the first, uh, okay. So Redina, another question, uh, finished the last book yesterday. What is the best book you recommend on business and or self-improvement? Okay. It's, um, it's probably, okay. The most, probably the most important book that's ever been written. Uh, and I have to say this very seriously, um, is called 101 crucial lessons. They don't teach you in business school. And I've been told the author looks a lot like Brad Pitt. Uh, it, no, I'm just kidding. Okay. That's my book. Don't, you don't have to read it. Joke, joking. Um, <laughs> um, Self-improvement, anything Tony Robbins has done. Okay. And, and for those of you uh, that want to change your life and you're very frustrated, very frustrated, uh, I want you to go to one of Tony Robbins events. It's called uh, Unleash the Power Within, UPW. Okay. And um, it will be the best thousand dollars you ever spend. Get a loan if you want as well for this, right? School loan or, or borrow from your friends, family, whatever. I promise you it's, it's better than any Udemy course you can take from me or anybody uh, or, or, or any university degree you have. Uh, and um, uh, Dan, you'll love this. Tell your, tell your girlfriend at, um, at Harvard Business School this. Uh, so my, my, my best friend, Jason Denny, he graduated class in 1999. Uh, from from HBS uh, and um, Tony Robbins went to give a guest lecture there. And at first, everyone showed up. And they're like, "Oh my God, is this like some cheesy infomercial thing we're going to see?" And at the end, they all gave him a standing ovation. Take that course if you want to reinvent yourself. And what Tony Robbins did was, he came from a really tough background. He had he had a lot of different fathers, and it was terrible. And he had personal stuff, and and he turned it around eventually. But he read eight hundred self help books, and so his course is kind of like the greatest hits of all that, plus much more amazing stuff that he's come up with. So do that, okay, that, that'll change your life. But Rudina, take a, a read his book. Um, and I don't, I can't just read books anymore. I, I have to be doing something else. So I, I listen to books, 
Okay. I, I like at the gym, I'll listen to audio, audible books or audible.com. I'll pay 15 bucks a month and I'll get one book a month for free or two, whatever. And in the car, I'll listen to books. So do his books. Um, another one you can do if you're in sales and only if you're in sales, there's a great book by the, uh, the founder or the, the, the co-CEO of SAP named Bill McDermott. Uh, and it, it's called the, the winner's dream. And I love reading books or listening to books from people that uh, actually wrote them because their heart's into it. They're passionate. So, all right, next up. Sorry. All right, don't go anywhere, please. I'm trying to scroll down. I just, oh, here we go. Okay, so Mitchell's got a, a question here. Okay, Mitchell, hi, Chris. I asked last week about private equity internships. Would you recommend working for two years in investment banking, then go into private equity, or just jump straight into private equity after college? So I don't think there's much of a difference. I, I think that private equity, I think private equity is a little bit more pressure on you because you have your own PL, make money for investors fast. But I think the hours are too long in investment banking. Okay. Like um, a lot of people want to be an investment banker. They don't know why. Um, and it's, they're miserable for four years. It sucks. Um, use as a stepping stone to get into business school if you want to do that, whatever. But I think that if, if private equity and investment banking are kind of similar because they both originate the product, right? Investment banking, you'll originate the product for an IPO. Uh, in, um, uh, in private equity, you'll kind of originate the product because you buy a company that's public and take it private. Then you help take it public again, or you'll work on M&A or just take over, or you'll be an activist investor like Carl Icahn and get a board seat. So they're both kind of origination. So I, I think both are, 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 are similar. If you're, if you're, um, if you always want to do private equity, um, then you can just skip the investment banking stuff. And getting into private equity is tough. And, um, and, and it all comes down to networking. Okay. You don't have to go to like a, an Ivy League school to get in. You just have, but you got to network a lot. Okay. A lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, and a couple of good movies I'm going I'm to give you uh, for private equity. Um, let me actually, I'll just give you one. Uh, there's, there's a great movie um, called uh, Other People's Money with Danny DeVito, OPM. And he takes over a company and there's a great speech he gives the shareholder. I mean, check that out. I think you'll enjoy that. Okay. Uh, and then um, I also want you to, to read a book called Barbarians at the Gate. Okay. Barbarians at the Gate. And that will talk about the massive private equity deal that was done in the late 80s uh, on, uh, on Nabisco. Nabisco is the National Biscuit Company. Anyway, it's interesting. Barbarians at the Gate. Cool name too, huh? All right. Great. So hopefully that answers your question, Mitchell. John, um, John Collins, uh, thanks for your time and advice. We'll have to circle back and watch the rest of the webcast uh, after work. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, have, a, have, a, have a good day at work, uh, John. Uh, Cassandra uh, says, thanks for the advice. Thank you for being on the call. Uh, Geronimo, um, uh, you have mentioned Tony Robbins. Do you use neuro-linguistic programming? I've always been curious to know if it's worth it. Um, so NLP. So Sort of. So I condition myself, you can condition yourself to think on a different level, uh, not a higher level, just a different level. Uh, and what Tony Robbins talks about is everything in life, uh, and this goes for everybody in the call, everything in life can be kind of put into a bucket of pain and pleasure. Okay. So for example, if I eat this big piece of chocolate cake, I will get this much pleasure today, but it will result in this much pain because I'll gain weight. So think of it in those terms. Okay. And, and next time you go to McDonald's and, and you're tempted to get, um, a, you know, a, a, a Big Mac, whatever, think of pain and pleasure, neuro linguistic or kind of that way, conditioning yourself to think differently. Yes. The Big Mac will taste this good, but I'll die earlier, <laughs> whatever it might be. Um, I love McNuggets and the hot mustard sauce, dude. I'm a healthy guy, but I, I will never cut McNuggets out every now and then I will do it. That's my advice. Sorry. I love that. So that's NLP. Okay. All right. Uh, question here from, from Dante. Um, what other major manufacturing hubs are there in the world besides China? Uh, is the current low cost economy of scale manufacturing model sustainable uh, in, in the long term? Boy, that's a great question. Um, so I think that, that wage 
interest rates are going to spike in China. I think they're going to have a very big inflation problem uh, one day because uh, you can't keep up this high growth rate forever. And what's going to happen is going to be other offshore places that are going to be very competitive with, with China uh, from a manufacturing perspective. Um, you know, Mexico has always been great. Um, and, and Canada actually has been uh, an, an area for the United States, just because relatively speaking, and it, this is total BS, but we make less in Canada. Um, anyway, I'm not going to go there, sorry. Uh, but other competitive countries will emerge. Which ones? I, I don't know, to be honest. And it depends on, on the, uh, the policy of the government, you know, if they're, if they're, they're pro-capitalism um, in South America, whatever. Um, you know, I'm praying for you guys in, in Brazil. Um, totally off topic, but it has to do with policy as well. So anyway, that, that, that's, that's what I'll say. But, but I think in the future, robotics is going to play a big part. Uh, and so, you know, today people talk about, oh, we don't want jobs leaving America or whatever. I'm not going there. Um, but I think it's going to be about robots. Okay. Uh, it's, there's a, a movie called Gung Ho with Michael Keaton back in the eighties, uh, on, on Japanese companies, uh, replacing, um, uh, some employees with robotics. I think it's going to be just a thing of the future, right? So um, robotics is going to be everywhere. Um, and if you're from Ontario, go to the Honda factory. And I, used, I went there before with clients when I worked in Japanese equities. And you could see cars being built um, just by robots. It's incredible. Uh, and I went to the Tesla factory here in, in Fremont. Um, and um, most Teslas, it's amazing. They're, they're built by robots. It's incredible. And so it's going to force all of us to kind of think about services industries. Okay. So, and as you all think about your next company to start, I want you to think about how scalable is this? Don't be a doctor or a lawyer because you can only treat one patient at a time. Do be a teacher because you can teach the entire world at the same time. Okay. Or, or record courses, write once, read many, that sort of thing. So, um, Anyway, I, I think robotics will kind of obfuscate the need for offshore manufacturing in the future. Uh, and, and if you're interested in, in companies that might benefit from that, um, there's a Japanese company called Fanuc, F-A-N-U-C. You, you can look into it if you want. Okay. Robotics company. Pretty cool. And I'm not talking about the, the Sony dog thing. I'm talking about like real robots. Um, and, and I think that your kids um, and, and my kids, maybe my kids' kids, We'll, we'll build robots at home. You see it in schools. People are building robots at school. It's so damn cool, right? They'll Like MIT, they'll have these little, I don't know, basketball games with robots. Um, it's going to happen here. And there's a great Lego product I bought for my kids a couple of years ago that, that kind of does that. It's fun. Yeah. So, um, and by the way, for those of you that have kids, I, I, I published a, a controversial vlog last night on why video games are good for kids. And I put in brackets in smaller font in moderation. <laughs> um, I think video games are good for kids, uh, as long as it's not too violent. But, but I think we're, we're penalizing our kids if we don't let them play video games because it's how they socialize. You know, uh, like a lot of kids want to be vloggers when they grow up. That is a profession. Major League Gaming is a profession. And remember this, I'm telling you right now, that within a decade, there's going to be certain people in Major League Gaming that make more money than the top athletes on the planet because Major League Gaming is scalable, right? It's it's right once read many. With, with Twitch, everybody can watch at the same time. Twitch is a company that Amazon owns. They bought for only 400 million uh, where people broadcast themselves playing video games. It's a huge industry, huge industry. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, Oshamlin, thanks for that question. I appreciate it. Um, I, I'd love to help. It's so hard for me to do one-on-one -on -one calls now. My, my schedule is so tight, but, but dude, just come on this call every week forever. And I promise you, I'll answer every question you have. Always, always, always. Okay. And if you work for somebody else and you don't want to ask a certain question, then sign up with a new YouTube account and ask me questions uh, online here. Um, I, I, I'd love to do it. I'm, I'm so jammed, so jammed with stuff. And it, it breaks my heart that I can't do this as much as, as much as I used to. Uh, but, uh, but, but, but thank you. Thank you for always asking. I appreciate it. Um, okay, McBell's got a, a, a question here. Thanks so much, Chris. This is gold. Oh, my pleasure, please. Last question. I promise, uh, and ask me as you want, please. Can you talk a little about team building? It's really tough to hire someone with a totally different background um, uh, from without um, offering them equity or money. It's true. 
Uh, at times, you can't even hold a decent conversation with them because they don't know how to program Python uh, like they do. Okay. So please talk a little bit about ways to talk to these people. Okay. Uh, and then you got to follow up. Um, oh, no, that's Rodina. Sorry. Uh, so when it comes to team building, I, I made this course, and I'm not just trying to pitch my courses. I, I do this out of my heart. I love doing this. But but I, I do put all my answers in courses, a lot of them. There's a course I, uh, that I made uh, called How to Motivate. Uh, and there's a lot of team building exercises that I mentioned in that course. And I include a 250 page book for free there. Um, the courses are cheap, obviously. Just go, you can go and, and go to haroonventures.com if you want. And I think if you scroll down on that page or click the classes page, whatever, uh, you can find how to motivate that course. Take that, I promise you it'll help you. If it doesn't materially help you, uh, then there's 100% uh, money back guarantee for 30 days. Um, take that. It'll tell you everything you need to know. Okay. And, and you get that book for free as well, which is how to motivate employees. But, but I list a ton of different, uh, team building activities, uh, uh, within that book as well. Okay. Um, and, and just little things like this, like if you have a lunchroom in your company, uh, uh, at Macbell, um, the way to get employees to talk to each other is I love doing this. You put up a map of the world in the lunchroom, okay, on the wall, okay? Uh, and then what you do is you have uh, red pins, and then you have uh, a piece of paper attached to the pin. And you write your name, and you put where you were born, okay? And then uh, you leave um, a, a pen attached to a piece of string and a bunch of those red pins on the side uh, with the, the, the label pasted to them. And um, you, you ask, and eventually everyone puts up, where were you born? Okay. And when you're sitting there having lunch with other people, you're like, God, I didn't realize Chris was born in uh, Tanawanda. I wasn't, but whatever, or Tawaga, um, that sort of thing. And it encourages um, uh, uh, communication uh, and team building too through communication. Then what you do is a month later, you put up green pins, okay, with, with pieces of paper attached as well. And, and then you type in, uh, and then after it, but you put about 10 times more green pins. Than, than red pins on the side. And then you ask people if they want to put a pin where they've visited in the world, okay? And for some people, it's gonna be 10 countries, whatever, okay? Then a month later, you put up yellow pins and you put them on the side. And you put up a little yellow sign saying, please put a pin where you've always dreamed of visiting one day. And then you have people put those up and then it'll be nice team building because I don't know, you, you might, you might meet, so, you might find out that you always wanted to, to visit Barcelona. Uh, and then you have somebody that um, in your company works uh, that is from Barcelona uh, or visited there. And so it, it encourages, like I mentioned before that sports is great team building talk, um, but so is uh, different places in the world through through that exercise uh, in, in your lunchroom. And so I list, um, I think another 10 or 20, whatever exercises like that to build team building, to enhance uh, your, your culture. Okay. Um, so uh, I, I, I would, I would, I would check that out at uh, MacBell. And, and, and if you haven't, um, if, if that didn't answer your question, please let me know. But I also do little things like there are a million different exercises uh, as well that I list that will really help with, with team building. And when I worked at Accenture, it was a lot of fun. They would have these team building events. And what they would do is they'd take you in a room. And it was usually on a Friday around uh, around 10 or 11 a.m. And they would divide you up into five groups, okay? And it has to be people from different departments, okay? You cannot talk and be associated with, with your buddies. And then what they do is each group was given 10 straws and an egg, okay? Or, uh, not a hard-boiled egg, snake. And what you had to do was with those 10 straws and you're given a roll of tape as well. You had to come up with a way to make sure the egg doesn't break if it's dropped from 10 feet, okay? And so what happens is you're given 10 minutes or so to, to, to collaborate with your team, okay, on how to make this egg not break. And then you're tested at the end by somebody, whatever. Um, and there's a bunch of fun events like that and then what happens is um, the second it's one o'clock on Friday, you can say, um, as a way to say thank you to all of you, uh, you can all go home now, enjoy your weekend. And by the way, you get Monday off as well, okay? And just doing that, um, it'll enhance team building. It'll just kind of make, I don't know, man, it'll just make everybody happier. 
And, and there's nothing dumber, I think, than making people do team building events um, at nights uh, or during the weekend because your employees are going to absolutely hate you for taking them away from their family. Um, and we can't get that time back, spending time with our kids. So if you're going to, you can do team building events like, you know, um, every, every year, call it team building week. And every day at 11 a.m., something different happens. And so uh, Friday, we already talked about, which is the egg thing. I'm making this up as I go. But Monday at 10 a.m., everybody meets and there's a scavenger hunt. There's teams. You can do that. Okay. Um, and then Tuesday of the annual team building week, uh, everybody meets at 10 a.m. And you go see a matinee movie. Okay. And then you give everyone free popcorn and stuff. Okay. Wednesday, you all go to a sporting event as long as it's during office hours. And of course, you pay for everything. Okay. Um, it's a write-off anyway. Uh, and then Thursday, um, I, I don't know, whatever, some other activity. But but read that book, uh, the motivating book. And it's for sale on Amazon too, but don't buy it on Amazon because you can get it free in the course, How to Motivate Employees. So all that stuff I just talked about uh, was from that How to Motivate uh, course. So I'm like, well, hopefully, hopefully that helps you, dude. All right, Redina, um, I asked you about books or a mentor, uh, mainly on decision-making because I am not good at it. Um, Oh, you're from Albania. How are you? Excellent. Thank you. Um, that's awesome. So I've never, I've never had anybody from Albania on, on the call. Thanks. I, I do have students from Albania, though. I have students now in every country uh, in the world, and it's so cool because uh, on Udemy, you can, and I'll do it one day when my iPad's here. Uh, they give you a map in real time with bubbles of where all your your your, your students are from. For me, forty percent U.S., seven uh, percent India, five percent uh, Canada. Represent my people. Uh, then the UK, then um, then England and Australia, uh, and then Brazil, and then everybody else. Um, okay, all right. Um, so books about uh, mentoring. Okay, I, I, I. It's hard for me to come up with a book about uh, decision making advice. So here's why I recommend Regina. Regina, read read my my networking book. It's free. Go to HaroonVentures.com. Uh, download for free. And in your company, Regina, or at your school, um, or in your organization, I want you to find people with similar backgrounds to you, and sit down with them. And those are your those are your Yodas. Okay, everybody needs a Yoda. You need multiple Yodas. Okay, and and the best place for for the best kind of Yoda to find is somebody with something in common with you because they want to help you, and also somebody that's in a position you want to be in longer term so you can learn their secrets, you know, how they got to where they are. Uh, and if you work in a big company, I want you to have Yodas and other divisions as well, because business is cyclical. And one day your boss will be asked to let people go. It, it is what it is. And you want to make sure you have a plan B within your company. Okay. <clears throat> and why do people want to help you? Um, people always want to help you. You just got to ask. Um, but if you just close your eyes and imagine you're 20 years older, okay? You're 20 years more successful. You're 20 years older. You're really successful. And somebody reaches out to you that's 20 years younger than you and asks, and it's exactly like you, Regina, from the same hometown, same everything, and asks you for coffee. Would you say yes to a 20 year old, younger version of yourself? Of course you would. Of course you would. Uh, young by choice. Young by choice just mentioned here. Oh, young by choice, you made up your name. Oh my God, dude, that is brilliant. That is awesome. Okay, so earlier I asked Young by Choice here uh, how how um, how how he or she came up with uh, with, with the name, uh, and uh, Young by Choice um, said you made that up. I love it, and you have a second name which is old by mistake. <laughs> I love it in Switzerland. I love it. I love it. God bless you. What a great name, Young by Choice, um, dude. If you were to start a rock and roll band right now, wouldn't you call Young by Choice? How awesome is that? Or if you're Drake, and I'm only making I'm mentioning Drake because I'm from Toronto, represent Drake is from Toronto too. He makes Toronto cool. But if you're Drake or, or a rock star, of course you'd name your next album Young by Choice. It's just the coolest name ever. I love it. I love it. Um, actually, Young by Choice, if you don't mind, I'm gonna I'm actually gonna create a vlog. One of my vlogs I'm gonna call Young by Choice. Um, YBC. I love it. I love it. Thank you. That's awesome. Awesome. Very cool. Okay. And then somebody said here, what about Mind Valley Academy? Um, I, I don't know what that is. Sorry. Um, so I, I wish I could offer my humble thoughts on it. I don't know what that is. Thanks. 
Mac Bell said, Breaking Bad. That's right. You and Willem, you both win. <laughs> Willem was the guy who guessed what my McLovin ID was from what movie. Hi, I'm seven, seven and a half, actually. Um, that's right. Uh, Breaking Bad. What a great show that was, huh? All right. Um, stay with me here. I'm trying to scroll down. Hey, 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 Mr. Nitro, Dave, you're here. Thank you. It's not the same if if, if uh, Mr. Nitro is not in the call, you know? So, so Dave is a local. He's from here. Uh, and um, he used to work in the chemical industry, which is why his name is uh, Mr. Maestro I, or Mr. Uh, Nitro. Maestro would be cool though. Mr. Nitro, it's a cool name. Awesome. I thought initially it was from uh, Fast and Furious. Okay, Akil, uh, is it okay to to make your class teacher as a as, as your business partner? Uh, he provides too much value for me, and he is a graduate from number one B school from India. He had APJ um, uh, as faculty too. Is it okay to make? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with with getting your. Um, uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. He went to an IIT. And for those of you that are not familiar with that, there's five unbelievable, actually, tech schools in, in, in India called IIT. And each one of them is just as good as, if not better than MIT. Um, tough to get into. I never get in there. But yeah, there's, why not? Why not? Um, it, as long as your, your, your teacher has actually experience, like real experience in that area. Okay. Uh, otherwise, you could also have your teacher as one of your board advisors if you want, if she or he can help to introduce you to um, uh, to others. For some reason, my room always gets yellow around halfway through the, the webcast. I don't know why. Anyway, um, all right. Uh, next question I've got is from uh, Daniel777. How are you? Hi, Chris. Thanks so much for sharing all the information and insights. My pleasure. Uh, I would like to ask if you will be recording this office hours. I missed the beginning. Thank you for all you give us. Yes, absolutely. So. Every one of my webcasts, and this is number nine, uh, and I'll be doing this every Thursday from 8 a.m. until whenever it ends, Pacific time forever. But every single one is recorded. And you can always go to, uh, just click on my YouTube channel, uh, and one of the playlists is is these um, these webcasts are there. And what I usually do is, uh, Wrigley, who's uh, my Austin business partner, um, by the end of the day, he writes up the entire, um, the entire uh, um, uh, uh, webcast. Uh, so that you can click on just uh, questions or the time where these questions were asked. So I, don't, I don't waste your time answering questions you're not interested in. Okay, so usually it's, it's by the end of the day. So just wait till the end of the day and, th and then watch it that way. And also, if you're on my distribution list, um, uh, you, you'll see I, I send a, the, the, the webcast uh, replay on that as well. And if you're a Udemy student, if you're on my, you can always go to uh, all of my courses, just go to the uh, announcements page in whatever course you're in, you'll, you'll see it there as well. Okay. Uh, the, the link to that. Um, all right. So next one up, um, I've got, um, okay. So AFU, hi AFU or FU, sorry. Um, uh, and then you, you put in capitals BU at the end. So I don't know if that was acronym or your name. Hi FU, uh, you must be, uh, you must be attend impact theory program, Chris. And also you must be in Mind Valley Academy. Uh, we need you in that place too. Uh, you must be there and, and can be there so easily. See you soon in there. I love that. That's the best sales pitch I've ever heard. I love you, man. That's awesome. Um, I, I don't know what Mind Valley is. If it's university and it's local, and you want me to guest lecture, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to happy to do it. So just uh, send, write write a message uh, in LinkedIn. I'm happy to. If it's close, let me know. I, I usually don't like. Um, I don't travel very much. Um, because I want to be that dad that's there every night with my kids to say prayers to them and, and, and read them a book, uh, like Mr. Nitro Dave's book is called uh, Yip Yip. I love it. It's great. My kids love that book. Um, so I don't travel. I, I do do every now and then, like I went to Brazil recently for, for an ed tech thing. Uh, but I usually don't travel much, but if you're close by the hell yeah, heck yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Thank you. And I love the way you wrote that too, because it assumed I'm doing it. I, I love you, man. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. Uh, and by the way, separately, um, I want to give you guys a couple of a bits of advice on how to sell. A couple of tips I've learned. Okay, so number one, don't oversell. Okay, when you sense uh, that somebody is interested in your product and you're talking to them, then with all due respect, you have to shut up right away. Okay, I'm talking to myself, Chris, shut up. Always shut up once you sense they're interested. Otherwise, what happens is this. 
you sell past the close and they start questioning, wait a second, I was interested, but this dude keeps selling. Is there something wrong? Am I missing something? Wait a second. I don't want to get scammed here like that. Okay. So always stop talking once you sense you close the sale. Okay. And if you don't know if they're interested, then keep talking, keep at it, be like a pit bull on a pork chop. Keep at it until you hear the word no. Until then, all you've heard is not no. Okay. That sort of thing. Anyway, there's a couple, couple tips. Uh, and then one of my vlogs, I think was five or six tips on how to be great in sales or whatever. Let me know. My, uh, my neighbor's cutting his grass right now. If it's loud, let me know. I'll shut the door. Okay. All right. Um, and actually, I'll, you guys want to see my setup here? All right. I want to show you. Actually, yeah, I'm going to do that. Um, I, I'm going to I'm going to show you my, my setup if you're curious. You're not going to see the floor because I have all my props there and it's a disaster. Uh, but I'm unplugging the power here. And I'm going to just give you a little tour here if you want. All right. So that's what it looks like outdoors there. Okay. And that blanket there was from my Egyptian relative who gave me for my wedding. It's ugliest blanket ever, but it's really cozy and it blocks the sound. Okay, there's my, my smoke alarm on the ceiling. See all this stuff? I have all that stuff on the walls because it stops uh, the, the echo. And that's a camera where I hook up my iPhone to. See it there? All right. Uh, and then behind me is white and there's also green. I don't know if you can see there, green behind it. I can have the green sheet if I want to do green screen. Hi there. <laughs> uh, and then I have more lights there. Uh, and then there is um, just more, more blankets, a uh, fire extinguisher there. You see it? I have them in every room in my house, okay? Uh, it's a little spray can. Get it over Amazon. More lights. That thing draped there is the, um, that's my camera, so it doesn't get dusty, my high-end camera. That's a ticket there from the first Blue Jay game ever. They used to make them really big when I was a kid. Just kidding. More stuff, whatever. Uh, more more lights. Uh, and... Um, Anyway, that's my, uh, my, uh, my, my, my setup here. I did not show you my floor because it's embarrassingly uh, uh, um, dirty. Uh, and um, I, I use um, this microphone here with a pop. And the reason it's called a pop, musicians have this. Uh, otherwise, what happens is you, you hear the air when you go p and b. So p, b, p, b. That's why it's called a pop. Hi, I'm seven and a half. Anyway, and, and this here is a Blue Yeti. It's the only microphone you should ever use. And what I'm going to start doing is um, I'm going to start doing these webcasts uh, from different locations uh, just to make it more fun. I'm, I'm going to do it by, by the pool one day um, or, or by, by I have a fire pit outdoors, whatever. Just make it fun, man. Uh, we'll do that eventually just to mix it up a bit. Um, nobody asked that question. Sorry, that was that was off topic completely. Okay. Um, all right, next question is from um, Robin. Hey, Robin. Um, okay, hi, Chris. Uh, thanks for this awesome Q&A. You're most welcome. Thank you for attending. What should I do if clients do not pay on time? Okay. And what should you do if clients try to renegotiate afterwards? I know what you mean, man. It's tough. It's tough. So a couple of things. Um, number one. Uh, what you can do is offer a discount if you pay early. And we usually call it zero net 30 or one net 30, meaning you save 1% if you pay within 30 days. So offer them a discount, right? So the price is, let's say it's a hundred bucks. Um, you know, it's a hundred dollars uh, or it's $97 if you pay within 30 days, that sort of thing. You can try that out, experiment with that. Um, what else can you do? Collections is really tricky, man. Um, have them pay part of it up front. Like whenever I go and give a speech, and by the way, for Mind Valley, um, a Afu, um, uh, of course I'll talk for free. But uh, and then when I when I go and I, I you know I teach at Stanford, whatever, which I'm doing in a couple of weeks, uh, MBA students, venture capital stuff, which should be fine. That's free. Um, but if if I give guest lectures anywhere else, um, I, I, I charge, um, and um, it, it's not my main business, but I charge whatever. Um, and, and so. I, I, a lot of times I got paid half up front and half later. If I go and I did the whole Brazil thing for free, uh, but there's a, a big company in Canada that was bringing me to Calgary. I charge, of course I charge. Um, if I'm going to take, take me away from my, my kids, I'm going to charge. Um, 
but yeah, make I, I usually make them pay half up front. Okay, so do that as well. Okay, uh, make them pay half up front. It might also be in a contract if if you have contracts, whatever. Uh, you can, uh, Robin, you, you can you can put it in there as well. Um, and and if you have somebody that um, you can outsource as well, um, like I um this is terrible. When I was an undergrad at McGill and um, my credit rating is shot in Canada. I, I could never get a loan in Canada. This is terrible, but I, but I had credit cards maxed out uh, and I invested in companies. I did my first venture capital investment in a biotech when I was younger and I got a student venture capital loan from the Canadian government. I paid it back years late. Uh, I did well in my investment. I'm a risk taker, but it was dumb in hindsight, but whatever worked out. Um, you can, you can do what American Express did, which was this, they, they had some, they hired somebody to call me and this person was really intimidating. Uh, and, and I ended up paying it back uh, eventually in installments. You can, Robin, you can outsource to another company that's going to get the money for you. Okay. Uh, and you're gonna have to give them a hefty fee, like 30%, or whatever they get. You, you can try that. You can try that. So anyway, hopefully Hopefully that 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 helps you. Um, but I know it's hard, Robin. Especially I don't know what stage you're at in your company. When you're first starting out, you'll do whatever it takes to get a contract, um, and then eventually, hopefully, you get to a stage later in life where you can choose your customers. Right? Like I'll, I'll never do business with people that just, it's not fun for me. Anyway. Um, all right, Conrad. Hey, Conrad. How are you? Hi, Chris. I really like to listen to you. Greetings from uh, from Poland. Hey, hello. How are you? I've started to get a lot of customers recently, students from, from Poland. So thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, and we had somebody else from, from Poland on two weeks ago. Uh, and, and I remember at that point, I said, why can't somebody make an amazing movie about Lech Walesa? Incredible. He and Ronald Reagan around the fall of Berlin Wall. Just great story. I love it. Love it. Uh, Lech is, uh, is, is one of my heroes. Okay. Um, let me see here. Let me scroll down. Great. Uh, Redina, uh, I'm one of your, your students from uh, Al Albania. Chris, uh, hey, how are you? Um, I think I read that already. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, the older I get, the better I was. Uh, let, me, let me scroll down. Okay, great. Sorry. Uh, Akil, um, how do I decide on how much equity I should give fellow founders? as well as investors. Both are different. Okay, yeah. So if they're co-founders, I think everybody gets an equal amount. Okay, if you're all there at the same time, it's just, it's better for teamwork, right? Otherwise people are like, mm, I don't think that person should own more than me. Okay, that's what I would say. But there should also be language in the contract uh, where you can buy out people, okay? And, and hire a real a lawyer, not me, right? To give you advice on, on that, okay? In terms of... Pardon me. In terms of uh, equity, on on uh, how much equity to give other people, um, it's hard. So the way in venture capital, the way I see it, usually the founder, by the time they've raised money a couple times, uh, gets diluted down to twenty percent. Uh, by the time the company goes public, they usually own ten percent or less of the company. Now, new employees, early stage, usually give them you know one to two percent of the company. Okay, or less if you're a later stage company. That's, that's what I would say. Uh, and they can, you also want to give people stock options, right? Which is the ability to, to own part of the company later. Uh, and stock options, and if you work at a big company, a lot of you get options as well, which basically gives you the option to buy part of the company or a share in the company for a lower price, right? And so usually what you do is when a company goes public, uh, the earlier employees own a lot of shares and they have the options to sell part of their stake. Uh, and even, even companies like Oracle, uh, which, was, which was founded in the 70s um, and went public in 1986 within a month of Microsoft going public. But uh, Larry Ellison, um, you know, he would get a billion dollars worth of stock options even within the past decade. Uh, that's how you motivate employees. Anyway, uh, that, that's what I would say. Uh, hopefully I answer your question. Uh, so Rudina uh, uh, says, by the way, I'm, hold on. I'm planning to study in Canada. Uh, hope to meet you one day. I'd love to meet you too. Uh, I'll do a meetup there as well in, in Toronto. And actually every summer, uh, what I do is, is I go um, uh, in, in, in Canada for, for two weeks and, and I work from there. I'm always working. It's not work for me. I love what I do except Sundays, which is 
day for family, obviously. Uh, but I, I'm in Mississauga uh, every summer. So we'll meet up there. And, and my, my parents live in Mississauga, my, my, my brother and my family as well. It's, it's great to, to see, see everyone there. And, and I'll do a meetup. But if we're going to do a meetup in, in, in Canada, it's going to have to be in the best restaurant ever created, which is on Dundas Street in Mississauga. And that restaurant is called John Anderson, okay, named after a hockey player, kind of like Tim Horton sort of, right? John Anderson, they make the souvlaki you'll ever eat. So go there. We'll meet there, okay? Or at Harvey's, which I love. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, great. And souvlaki's are on me, Rodina. And anybody else in Canada when we meet. Okay. akil has got a question. Sir, what are your thoughts on Google and 13 other companies that no longer require a college degree? I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, it's, I, I don't like the whole class oriented society structure of, you know, those with PhDs, which stands for plumbing, heating, and dishwashing, <laughs> um, are thought of differently in society. You know, it's, 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 it's old school. I don't like it. Um, I don't think you need a degree uh, to, to get hired. And a lot of very successful people you know, don't have degrees or, or they started, um, they started in the mailroom. There's a lot of success stories like that. Um, like Barry Diller. Um, anyway, um, I, I don't, I don't think you need a degree to be successful. And, and I've gained a lot more respect for Google, uh, as well as Apple and Bank of America and IBM. IBM is industry's biggest mistake. Just kidding. It's not my wife works there. Oh my God, I'm in trouble. Though. No, I'm not. Um, it's not like we're live or anything, <laughs> uh, but I love IBM for doing that, for for being willing to hire people that, that don't have degrees. I love it because it just because somebody was born into a certain family uh, doesn't mean that they should have more opportunities. Anyway, I love it. I love it. So anyway, um, uh, Daniel777, uh, Daniel seven, 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 hey, uh, I think it's very nice for you to show us a bit of your place. Oh, cool. Uh, thanks. Uh, it makes us feel as if uh, you're a friend of us and know uh, known you for a long time. Thank you. That's how I feel. Uh, it makes us feel at home. Thank you, Chris. Um, I'm using a different email, but I used to take some of your Udemy courses, such as MBA. And I love it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And it this is great getting to know a lot of you as well. Um, you know, I, I, I feel like it, it's intimate. I'm getting to know you. You're, you're, you're in my, my, my house. That's how we say house in Canada. House. Um, so anyway, yeah, and, and I'll, I'll take you outdoors one day too, and we'll, we'll, we'll do it from, from the backyard. It'll, it'll be fun. And if you see my, my vlogs, you'll see I vlog a lot from the backyard. My, my kids are in it sometimes too. I did this one vlog actually, um, where I was on the trampoline in my backyard and I sent my, <laughs> it's out there, sent my drone 500 feet up in the air. I thought I was gonna get in trouble from the FAA. Um, but I registered my drone. You have to buy law now. Uh, and, and you'll see them in the backyard. And I was jumping on my trampoline as, as I was vlogging. Anyway, a little bit out there. Um, all right, uh, Arun, uh, sorry for my ignorance, but will the course on business model be up this month? Thank you. That's a great question. Um, uh, unfortunately, I, I'm not done with it yet. Um, so um, it'll probably be out by, uh, by early November. I'm, I'm working hard on it. Uh, but I will have uh, another course out um, uh, which which I'm making with somebody else on on um, uh, on Google AdWords uh, that will be up uh, probably probably by November 5th or so uh, and that's when I'm making with somebody else I only I get 25% of the proceeds the other person gets 75 because percent the other person is is an expert in doing all the work um, I don't know why I told you that but anyway um, uh, but I will have the business plan course up at some point in in November. Uh, and I, and I hope you'll love it. I, I hope it helps you to be independent and start your own company, uh, one day, uh, like, uh, like, uh, Mr. Nitro, Dave, hopefully you start your own chemical company. Somebody had to start Dow, Dow chemical, right? Somebody had to do it. So anyway, um, let me see next, next, if you have questions, please write them here. When there's no more questions, I will wrap up the call. Um, that's not a threat. <laughs> Um, so I've got a question, um, uh, from, um, uh, from Mr. Nitro, which is, which is Dave, uh, Dave is asking, Chris, what are your thoughts on using 401ks to start a company or a fund, uh, fund a franchise? My, my, my wife is thinking of, of doing that. Um, 
let's see, a small world because um, like Dave's wife is from uh, from uh, Bramley or Brampton in Canada, which is where I used to live. Um, what are my thoughts on 401k? And by the way, 401k, for those of you listening from outside the US, 401k is, uh, it means a retirement savings program. Okay. Uh, in Canada, it's called the RSVP. I mean, the RRSP. Other countries call called something different. Okay. Um, I, I think it's a good idea, uh, Dave, as, as long as it's a small percent of your net worth and, and money that you're okay losing. Okay. Um, I, I think that's actually not, not a bad idea. Um, let me think about this. So when you pull money out of a retirement savings program, you then take, pay tax right away. Only do it, Dave, if, if you don't have other money to put up. Okay. That's what I'll say, because I'd hate for you to pull that money out right now and pay taxes on it because that money, if you leave it in there, uh, can grow tax free for a long, long time. Okay. Um, only if you don't have access to other capital and talk to your tax attorney first, please. Okay. Uh, or hire a tax attorney and, and ask them first. Okay. And tax, tax lawyers are expensive. It could be a couple hundred bucks an hour, but it's worth it, man. It's totally worth it. Uh, kind of like hiring an accountant is completely worth it instead of doing it yourself. It's like an investment. So I would, I would talk to them. Okay. So, um, uh, 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 has got a, a question here. Uh, I answered your your founder's equity, but I didn't. Okay, good. Thank you for doing this. Please do this if I don't answer your question. Okay. Um, how do I decide on how much equity I should give up for investors? And you put investors in capitals, which, which means you're yelling at me. How much do you give up for investors? <laughs> Just kidding. I'm joking with you. I'm teasing you. Uh, thank you. And because I didn't answer your question, you, you repost it. Thank you. Good. Do that. Um, so, okay. Th this is tough. So, when it comes to investors, be really in, be really careful um, with investors if they're going to be on your board, um, and it's an official board seat because you can't undo that, and it's worse than a bad marriage. Um, but basically, the, the rule of thumb is for investors: be careful not to value your company too high early on, and I'll explain what that means. So. Let's say somebody approaches you and, and they say, uh, Akil, I, I want to invest in your company and I want to give you $100,000 and I want to buy 1% of your company. Don't ever do that because $100,000 for 1% 1 of your company means that your whole company, meaning 100% of your company is valued at $10 million. Like, don't do that. Uh, unless it's actually worth that much. And I say that because don't do that because if you want to raise money later at another, at, you're, you're not gonna be able to raise money unless it's at a higher valuation. And that investor who invests a hundred thousand dollars for 1% will be mad at you. Maybe if you try to raise more money at a higher valuation or part of it, if you try to raise more money at, at a lower valuation, I'm going to give you an example because this is confusing. Okay. So let's say somebody gave you $100,000 for 1% of your company, okay? That values your company at $10 million, okay? So if somebody, if later on you want to raise more money um, and somebody wanted to invest in your, your company, um, they, um, they, they might say to you, I want to invest in your company, but $10 million seems a lot for your company. I'll give you 50 grand or I'll give you 100 grand um, if, if, if you give me, you know, 10% of your company at a uh, $5 million valuation. Okay. So your original investor who gave you hundred grand is going to be mad because that person won't want you to bring on more investors at a lower valuation. You see what I'm getting at? So you always want to have the valuation of your company low enough initially so that previous investors will be okay getting diluted. And I'll give you an example. Let's say that in another scenario, um, uh, 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 Akil, somebody approaches you and says, I'll give you $100,000 for 10% of your company. Okay. That values your company at a million dollars. Okay. Let's say you agree on that million dollar valuation. Um, that's smart because it's, it values your company at a lower pricing point initially. So that later on, if you want to raise more money and your initial investor is going to get diluted, they'll be okay with that. And let me run through the math on this. So let's say an investor owns 10% of your company and they give you a hundred grand. Okay, it values your company at a million bucks. 
Okay. Um, then if you want to raise more money at a $5 million valuation in the future, um, and you want to issue more shares, and that original investor is going to get diluted and will own less than 10% of the company. They're okay with it though, because it's at a higher valuation. Okay. If that doesn't make sense, let me know. So um, what I would say is, uh, Akil, as long as you don't value the company at too high a level uh, early on, then that's okay. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay. I, I threw out some confusing stuff there, but just you, you don't want to dilute them too much in future rounds. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, please let me know. Um, okay, great. Um, and then uh, next question I've got is from uh, Sumit. If you have questions, answer them now. Otherwise, we're going to wrap up the call. It wasn't a threat, but just when I don't see any more questions, I wrap up the call usually. Uh, and I want to stay on as long as you want me to forever. Okay. All right, okay, so, so Shamlin's got another, another question. Uh, sorry for, for the one-on-one -on -one call. Uh, oh, don't, no, no, don't. Uh, I mean, in consulting fee one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> the older I get, the better I was. That was done with me. Uh, what should your consulting fee be one-on-one? -on -one? Okay, I see what you're saying. Because I have a product competing with one of Nike's products, uh, and it's much better than their product based on my feedback. That's awesome. Yeah, somebody's got to give Nike a run for their money, right? Um, okay, so if your question is, um, what is your consulting fee? Um, so if you're going to hire a consultant, um, how much to pay them? Um, well, you always got to figure out how much you think their time is worth, or if you're going to do consulting work for somebody else, how much is your time worth? And it's always about opportunity cost. Okay. So what is your time worth doing something else? Okay. So, um, for example, I, I, if my time is 50 bucks an hour, uh, and I'm going to hire somebody else, uh, then, uh, for for my time, then I should be charging them 50 bucks an hour. Is that what your question is? If not, please let me know. And I'm sorry if I confused anyone there. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, Shamlin, type your type your question again here if I confused you there or, I, or I'm confused, which clearly I am. Sorry. Um, so I, I love to outsource stuff that's less than uh, my what I think my dollar value is per hour. Okay. Anyway. Um, all right. So... Um, uh, Arun has is, is got a, a question here. How do you think cryptocurrencies are going to change the way we do transactions in, in the future? Thank you. Uh, um, that's, that's awesome. Okay, so I used this this last week. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to use it again. Okay. And last week when I was answering a question about this, I changed, I spilled my coffee on my computer. My computer works great, by the way. So it's, it's fine uh, since the coffee spill incident. Um, so I think that, so this here is the blockchain. Okay, it's an example of the blockchain. And so uh, in, in the future, I, I think that the blockchain is not only going to be our digital ledger, and that's a picture of a, a ledger book from my cryptocurrency course, but the blockchain is going to store all types of contracts, okay? Like sports contracts, okay? That's a Michael Jack, uh, Michael Jordan pretend rookie card there. Okay, sports contracts, all contracts will be done like this. Uh, or um, old historical contracts. Okay, like this um, uh, will be on, on the blockchain uh, as well uh, in, in, in all things, all contracts. Like if you buy video games, whatever, um, that, that sort of thing. The first block, by the way, that was ever transacted on the Bitcoin blockchain was called the Genesis block. Genesis I, the first block. Not funny? Get it? Sorry. So everything will be on the blockchain. Okay, it's just a more secure way of transacting. Okay, and sharing information. It's more secure. So anyway, that's what I think is going to happen with cryptocurrencies longer term. Um, anyway, so cryptocurrencies are not just going to be about online capital or online uh, 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 currency. It's going to be about online uh, contracts as well, you know, like like your digital ledger. And that's an old ledger book um, from a, a place in Canada, a farmer in Canada from, from Caledon. And Dave, this is a good segue to your comment here because you mentioned your wife is going to Brampton on Saturday. I'll, yeah, I'll have her bring back some, uh, some Tim Hortons. Thank you. I miss Tim Hortons. I love it. Tim Hortons is a coffee company in Canada that has 70% market share, which is way bigger than, than Starbucks will ever get. It's kind of like a rite of passage for Canadians. Um, 
Uh, thank you both for that. Okay, so um, top ten. Okay, Keel's asking now for top ten things uh, for for a great business model. Um, let me. I'm gonna actually take a big sip of my coffee here. I'm hungry. Sorry about that. Um, my, my, my coffee's got a lot of calories in it. The way I make it keeps me full. Okay. Um, you want to hire me? <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm not, I can't be hired by any of my students. Um, be, let's just do it on, on this call here. Um, um, cause it's free. Okay. Okay. Top 10 things a, a great business model must have. You're taking notes. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go in, in no particular order. Uh, number one, a great management team, okay? In, in this business plan course I'm making, which is gonna be free for all of you on this call, just remind me when I release it for a code. Um, the management's more important than anything else, okay? Ideas are commodities, but execution is not. I'd rather invest in a B business model with an A management team instead of investing in um, an A business model with a B management team. So management's important, okay? Number one. Number two, the total addressable market must be massive. It has to be a massive market. Otherwise, it's a, it's a waste of your time because if you hit it big in a small market and you capture 100% of that tiny market, who cares? Okay, so the size of the market's gotta be big. Um, there's gotta be um, barriers to entry, high barriers to entry, right? To stop somebody from copying you. Like maybe you patented something. Okay, um, another one is um, a, a great business model um, it's got to have a, um, a great, dis a scalable distribution channel, meaning sell stuff online. So don't use, don't make stuff if you can, right? Have it digital so you can sell it online. Okay. So it's very scalable. Um, another thing is, um, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm hungry. I'm going to take a bite of this as, as we go on here. When, when I'm hungry, I can't think. All right. Um, give me one second. Um, it's a quest bar. It's good. Give me a second, please. Um, I can never think when I'm hungry. When I go to interviews, I always bring um, a neutral bar in my pocket and I go to the washroom and eat the neutral bar if I'm hungry. All right. Um, I've right, talked about four things. I'll keep going now. Okay. I've got more energy now. I'm back. All right. Um, next thing uh, in a business model, we talked about four things we need. Um, um, so a great business model also has um, uh, milestones. You set up goals, okay, to achieve those milestones. And by the way, if anybody starts a company and within, okay, good, I got my energy back. Uh, and you're not sure if you should shut your company down. I want you to give it two years. I always give it two years. And ask yourself after two years, um, if I had known about the issues that I've uncovered in the past two years, would I have still started this company today, right? If I knew two years ago what I know today, would I still have started if the answer is no, shut it down. That's okay. It's all right. Keep trying. All you have to be is right in business one time. All right. So that's uh, about, about five things there. Um, what else is there? Um, a great business model reinvents itself over and over and over again. Okay. Reinvent yourself, right? Just like uh, Reed Hastings did. Um, good guy. I met him uh, with Netflix. So Netflix was a DVD company initially dvd rentals and he reinvented that company with online digital stuff digital distribution so reinvent yourself over and over and over again otherwise your competition will eat your lunch and destroy you um let's see um take your time hiring people okay um take your time hiring people hire the right people right hire slowly and fire quickly I hate firing people. I've done it before. You have to. And it's always the, the boss's fault. Right. Uh, but hire very slowly because one bad apple can spoil the whole dead bunch. Right. That's a great Guns N' Roses song too years ago. Uh, hire, hire, take your time hiring people because one person can destroy your corporate culture. Okay. Hire slowly, fire quickly. All right. Um, next is um, have a board of advisors in place. Right. That's number eight, I think. That's sort of like management. Sorry. 
um, but uh, have a board of advisors or mentors in place that can, that can help you. Um, see what, what's next. Um, think about creating a, a platform business model. That's number nine. Okay, so you own the road and you can charge the cars. Okay, kind of like Udemy. Udemy is a great business model, right? And YouTube too, because other people create content, but they own the road. Okay, so platforms are great. Uh, and uh, the last one is, let me think. Um, make sure you, you love every second of it. If you don't enjoy it, don't do it. Okay, it's gotta be a passion. You can reinvent an industry if you love what you're doing. Otherwise, it feels like a job, feels like work, forget it. It's got to be something you enjoy doing, like like hockey players or, or baseball players or any athlete. They love what they do. It's not like they don't, they don't, they don't, you know, go to work every day and say, I have a job. They have a passion. So anyway, those are those are 10 things. I'm sure there's a lot more. Uh, that I'll that I'll have in my business model. So looks like there's no more questions. I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up now. I want to thank you all very much for your your time. This has been number nine, uh, which has been been great. Uh, I forgot to do this, which I do usually every week, which is I take a sip out of this cup, which says I survived another meeting that could have been an email. Hopefully this didn't feel like uh, a meeting that could have been replaced with email. Hope you enjoyed it. And by the end of today. Uh, California time, San Francisco time. We'll have the entire call uh, written up for you. Uh, so uh, thank you all for your time. God bless you. And I will see you next week and every week at the same time. Thank you.